We're here in downtown Los Angeles at 10th Planet headquarters for 10PQ, a 16-man EBI rules bracket where the winner gets an automatic invite to the CJJ in Cancun, Mexico. Bert, today we're gonna watch a bunch of these guys go ahead and compete. We have several veterans, even some big name guys who have been in the big EBI show before, including Nathan Orchard. We got not just Nathan, but Ben Eddy, is one of the greatest submission artists on the planet right now. Maybe the best guard player alive. Yep. But uh, a couple of dark horses though. I know you got Mike John. You Mike big on John, him. I trained I train with him here and there at uh, 10th Planet Orange. He's a multiple time qualifier. Um, he's finished in second place, I believe three times. So today could be the magic number four and finally take home the prize. I got another guy for you to keep your eye on, Andrew Alexander. Andrew's been around a long time. He's a very dangerous offensive player. So watch out for him. He could do some real damage in the bracket. And now, 10PQ23, the lightweights. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh. One bioorganic cognitive cog in a system of infinitesimalism consumed by the simplest shit. Loom in the dark, Lucifer's aloofness and heart. My tongue will suffice, afflicted by the will to survive. For every cruelty inflicted, redirection and flight. Retribution retrofitted for more than physical fights The fusion of life, experience, and fiscal insight The future is bright, fuck yeah, I'm casting the light Producing a score, starring like I need an encore Navigating the waves till I arrive on the shore Step over the graves, peaceful knowing no one is saved Pero listo, no me rindo Know what I'm saying? My upbringing on the east coast Foster the beast mode Never forget to represent for my people Show some respect, this main speaker is keynote Plus he's been puffing on that OG weed smoke Swing low, sweet cherry it till we croak, it's she code Homie, only thorough of me, go feed five, oh, bum Fuck you and then some Giant aspirations, got you playing the victim Bliss comes and goes when the passion is low Sorrow is sweet sedative, price right medicine Evident in the way that you pine for attention Get rid of the chip on your shoulder, play time's over Tonight With the new and the sound cliche Careful with the words that you use When you're turning a new leaf Finding a new scene You run up the shadow figures And haunt you in your dreams oh. It's time to start a new chapter This life's a mystery Happily ever after Welcome to the 10th Planet Qualifier This is the CJJ Qualifier Man, CJJ, 10th Planet Lightweights, we're here in downtown Los Angeles. I'm Mike Wilson, 10th Planet Black Belt, here with my partner in crime. Brandon McCatherine, also a 10th Planet Black Belt. Happy to have you joining us here. We've got a stacked bracket for you guys. First of all, the atmosphere in this setting, this is the best place to watch jujitsu to me. I love this tight little underground feel that we got going on. Man, I'll tell you what, you know, when we're, when we're intimate and everyone kind of knows each other and uh, we're all familiar, we're all friends, and we're right on top of each other in a big weekend like this. There's really nothing like it, like you said. And it, it's so tight and intimate, and everyone gets so into it. It's, it's one of the best ways to watch a jiu-jitsu match. And listen, it's friendly competition, but there's a lot on the line here. The Man. winner of this tournament is going to go to Cancun June the 5th, and they're going to be representing 10th Planet in the Combat Jiu-Jitsu World Tournament. It's, a, it's, re it's really incredible, guys. Manning Leverett again from Jacksonville. Taking on Taylor Bourne from Detroit. And BMAC, I'm just excited as heck to be here. 10th yeah. Planet HQ, underground vibe, downtown Los Angeles. They're showing off the belt there. I think that's the Combat Jiu-Jitsu World's belt, though. Surely the winner of the qualifiers not getting that belt. No, no, they're not getting that belt from the <laughs> qualifiers. But what they do get is the opportunity to represent 10th Planet in the second spot at CJJ Worlds. Right, that first spot is already taken by one, none other than Keith Kerkorian, ADCC Trials Champion. So. I'll tell you, I've seen Manning a lot. Okay. I've seen Manning a You're lot. familiar he, with him. He was in the PGF. He competed in the PGF Here. last season. Awesome. Brilliant. Very, very good player. He's got a really well-rounded game. He's a good leg locker. He's good on the back. 
Good guard, good wrestling. Ooh. You see here with a little pass by. Great. He's attacking the back right away. Claw ride to straight the back. In the, man, straight I love the body that claw triangle. position off of a slide by where you get that arm under the armpit and around the neck, pinch it tight. Look at this. Right He's away got the to arm trap. He's got that right arm around the neck, and he is squeezing on that face crank. Oh, and it's going to get the tap with it. With, Unorthodox position yeah, right there, the B-Mac. crucifix kind of Barrett Yoshida crucifix style play. What a quick win. Man. He picked that one up in about 30 seconds. Man, and showing out. And you were saying we, you, you, you had him on your show, PGF. And he, and he performed the same way, man. He finished, uh, he finished tied for first during the regular season. Man. Um, and he's just a, he's a killer. Whew. Hey, quick work at that one. Oh, that was tiring, though. <laughs> and I, was, I was trying to praise you a little bit and talk about how good you were. You closed the match out before I even got around to it. <laughs> Heck, yeah, I proved you right. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Take us through that last match, man. What, 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 what was the game plan? Was that the game plan just to hit him with that duck right away and uh, that slide by right? That's the first time I've ever hit a slide by in competition. So <laughs> oh, wow. thank you, Sam. That's all, that's that's all awesome. Samuel Barbosa right there. That's incredible, dude. And then so you were really tight on the back and you sunk in. You had kind of a, a crucifix like position at the end yeah. there. I keep fucking up and letting go of the hooks. Okay. That's oh, so it wasn't intentional. You're just losing no. the hook. But, yeah. but you know what? You've done it so much that I bet you're getting that position a lot, right? Heck yeah. So you're, you're def the lack in one area yeah. is developing a skill set in another area. So yeah. it was a great kill, and he didn't look like he was going anywhere, man. It was really good control. Heck yeah. Yeah, way to I look out there, that, man. Yo. Well, congratulations, and we'll see you coming into the second round, man. Yes, sir. Man, Thank you great again. Job. Good job, Thank brother. Oops, that was Man, Jordan making quick work. He, he lives He's up. got Orchard in round two, though. Man, okay, guys, so this bracket, let's talk about this bracket for a All second right. for the people at home, BMAC. We got this next match coming up. If you watch sub-only jiu-jitsu, you know this next competitor. There's no doubt about it. He's a combat jiu-jitsu veteran. He's a... a he coaches some of the legends Dude, in this planet. His system. squad that he's building, and we're going to break it down for you guys. Ted Planet Bethlehem's coach, Mr. J.M. Holland, is coming up here in this qualifier match, coming into this tournament. Again, a veteran in the qualifier. Uh, and he, a lot of veterans in the qualifier. Yeah. It's, well, it's, it's incredible that yeah, uh, yeah, come this on one's in, coming in. Come on in and have a seat. Come on in and have a so seat. So we're going to bring in his nice opponent. Nice to have you here. Alex Marucci. What's up, brother? Go ahead and put, put on that headset for us, brother. There we go. What's going on, brother? Hey, how you doing? Good, good. How, good. Man, how are you? Outstanding. Feeling you, good. Ready to go. You ready to go right now? Yes, sir. Perfect. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from 10th Planet, Fullerton. Fullerton. So it's yes, a little sir. short drive to, yeah. to L.A.? Not too far, man. Okay, so you just woke up this morning ready for battle. Rolled out of bed, ready to <laughs> battle. <laughs> Beautiful. What can we expect to see from you out there tonight? Uh, some, some good passing, maybe some leg locks. We'll see. Okay. okay. Beautiful. Word. Well, thank you, man. Good luck to you. We'll see you out there. All right, cool. Get it done. Guys, that's Alex Marici, and I've actually trained with him at 10th Planet, Orange County. Yeah, that Fuller. And, all, those, uh, all those squads are connected well, up there. Well, he's fight. a black belt initially in the Gi, black belt in the Gi, shout out Armand. I thought we'd get our interview with JM, but I think he's all about the business right now. Y'all, that doesn't and surprise declined. me. JM's, JM's <laughs> not you, looking for me. If you guys day. have met JM Holland or know anything about his reputation in the game, he is not one to diddy daddle. He does not play it's as my they favorite say. thing about him. No, <laughs> he's very about his business, you know, and, and a lot of people garnered a lot of respect, myself included, of that. Little elevation here. JM follows it very nicely. JM. Looking to counter with a little Baron Bolo action of his own. You know, the big thing for me where, where I had a lot of admiration for Jam was that he was on the East Coast as a brown belt with his partner, Zach Mullaney, in Bethlehem. And they were battling the Donaher Death Squad on a weekly basis. Yeah. You know, and uh, man, and they were holding it down. You know, they took some wins. They took some losses. But they were battling and, and really stepped up their, their level of competition for their students. Version, trying to go to the Ashi on the other side. And I think their students speak for themselves. You know, Grace Gundrum, John Thor, Blank, 
And a lot of up and comers. Sad. Renee Sosa out of there. Oh, yeah, Renee, he's going to. Coming up on the Flow Grappling. That's this week, right? Yeah, releases on Tuesday on Flow Grappling, Very the Who's Next to series. That, you guys definitely got to check that out. Our amigos. And we just love jujitsu, man. We just love spreading jujitsu wherever it is. Bringing you guys this free stream today as Alex on top looks yeah. for passing control. And he told us he was looking to get down and pass the guard just in that little brief interview there. He tried to flatten JM out, but JM did a good job. Just never let him have the dominant position on the inside and was able to close that off. And now look at this. JM trying to wrestle up with a body lock from the bottom of half here. S grip is together on the back. It's a good frame there on the front, keeping JM from getting the upper body connection that he needs. And looking to attack the leg off of it. JM's going to end up on top position. Let's see if he can stop that leg entry there where he's double gripping on the outside leg. He's going to try to roll through and counter mm -hmm. it. Might go that vaporizer set up. I think that's what he was looking for. Disengages. It's back to a neutral position. If you guys are just joining us, this is the 10th Planet qualifier for CJJ, the lightweights, 155 pounders. We got JM Holland taking on Alex Marici. I'm Mike Wilson, 10th Planet Black Belt, my little, partner. Little false reap set up. BMAC, commentator extraordinaire. Real measured pace from both of these guys. I was just going to say. I love this setup, though, this little Kieran Kuchik style setup. A little false reap action almost. And JM wisely keeps his sticky foot, preventing that position. And both guys comfortable flowing from top to bottom. Neither really. Oh, there's that clinch game from man, JM. Man, I tell you what. JM I was waiting is, for this. JM is very, very, very good in this position. I remember we, I was up at a finishers tournament in, uh, in New Jersey, and JM had a match against Ethan Krellinston. And, you know, Krellinston was, a, was banging no, it oh, out at the time. This man. has been several years ago. But Krellinston was really banging it out at the time up there on the East Coast. And JM pulled him into an overhook right here just like this and dropped him down into the rubber guard and ended up finishing him with a rubber – with a uh, – arm lock from the rubber guard. So, James going to have to pull this posture down here, though, if he wants to. Okay, he's going to switch off to a body lock. Now maybe think about getting back to his butterfly. Or maybe he wants to shuck underneath on that other side. Yeah, I think he's got that underhook on the right yeah. arm. Alex staying patient. I could see JM off balancing here with that little hip bump action. Yeah, just cop, cop clinch kind of position there. Right. Double wrist control from JM. Brings a knee inside, both feet inside, and he wants to go back to the feet again. And man, I'm going to tell you right now, the, the difference in uh, crowd energy is, is much different. It's a lot more, tension in, a lot more tension in the room today. The, it's, yeah. more, it's more silent in here. If you guys were watching along with us yesterday during the Blue Belt duels, there's a lot louder and more energy. And I think because they're Different We're, energy. Different I would energy, say. right? It was louder. There's a lot of energy in the room today, but there's a lot of yes, tension in the room. Yes, room that's Look, a better way to say it. JM starting. Well, they can feel that something's at stake. Right. You know, there's, you know, what do you win in the uh, team duel for the blue belts? You know, that's cool. It, it looks good on the resume. It's a great experience. It's, it's really not consequential in the big scheme of things. Of course. This matters to these this, guys. This is this huge. This really matters. And this is also a majority bracket of black belts. Yeah. Majority. Although we did see Manning Everett in the first round come out, guns blazing. and but He's not. I think he's a purple belt still. Yeah. that's. Sure. Look at this. We're going to see some rubber guard. Rubber guard well, action. Jam does a good job. Keeps it double underhooks position. Drives forward. Jam is definitely well versed in the defense of rubber guard. Alex looking for it again, though. He wants to... So he wants to clear out that space over there. Jam does a good job framing the hips off, getting his posture back. Oh, he would just love to throw that hips. left hook right there. I could just see it on <laughs> JM's face. <laughs> you know, you know, in his mind, he's thinking, "This is CJJ. We got. We're doing the qualifier for CJJ. He wants to be throwing those slaps and play his game specific for the tournament." But we're doing EBI rules here today. Look as he's JM try, jumping over, and he's got the front headlock. He's got a nice front headlock position. Alex, not super concerned it seems he seems like he's got his hands in position but jm 
He's gonna try to use it to attack the back. He does get into a decent body lock pass there, but right back in with that butterfly hook. Yeah, that, that butterfly Alex. hook from Alex is sticky. And and he's given JM some, you know, JM has done well defending this false, I say he's done well defending this false reap, but he's been caught up in that game quite a bit. Yes, yeah, it's definitely been in position. You could tell he's not trying to play too much in. Yeah. But his defense has been stellar. Looking to set it up again. Yeah, he keeps that inversion game, and he and goes there, to the secondary leg. We're nice. going to see that He's, back step, perhaps. Well, he's staying on this Ashi side here. Okay. Just jam and he actually is. Forced him to. He is in Honey Hole. Oh, I see it. A.K.A. cross Ashi position. A.K.A. saddle. 411, whatever your preferred nomenclature. <laughs> jam Holland staying cool in the pocket, though. We just call that leg spaghetti where I'm from. <laughs> linguini. Eddie, Eddie yesterday was calling it leg, leg linguini. Excellent work, man. JM. Good defense. Very good at navigating his way through all these dangerous positions. But, man, Alex has been putting the heat. Alex has been throwing heat for sure. He's getting good advice from his corner. Isaac Cordova, Michael John from 10th Planet Orange. They're definitely main training partners. I myself have trained with them. reap again. I think that the fact that they're up against that wall is going gonna, is gonna to play into Jam his advantage right now if he can avoid getting elevated. And there's that break by the ref. You know, that wall is a factor, B-Mac. That wall prevents some turns and some pinnings and some sweeps yeah, in that can, direction. And we've seen that in qualifiers in the past where, man, you go, you're going to escape a heel hook and then... You go to roll and you can't roll again because you hit the wall. Right. That's a big, like you said, man, that's a big factor. Like playing jam, getting low on this passing here. I, start, uh, mm, I thought he had him flattened out on that butterfly just a little bit. I think he's there. He goes. The just came for that flyover. All day warm ups from the crowd. Look at this gun show over here. Okay. Switching off the meat hook now. Alex needs to clear that head. Jam's gonna stand and try to shake. Yeah, Jam just. Rolling. Denying it, disrespecting the rubber guard, just shakes he, it right He went off. for that rolling guillotine attempt and ended up in cross Ashi. Alex attacking. Yeah, Alex did an awesome job keeping his butterfly hook in. Jam's doing a really Jam. good job of turning his heel out right there. Right now he's, he's maintaining an angle that's going to be hard to obtain the heel, but Alex is starting to dig it out. If he can Ooh, separate those Jam's feet. He's got to be careful. He's got to be careful right there. This oh. could be a problem. If he can separate those feet. JM forcing the roll. We're going to see it. Possibly oh, escape that knee line. There. Nice defense. That. Outstanding. Nice defense. Outstanding. And a great attack by Alex. Real patience again shown by JM Holland. Well, he knew he couldn't make a move defensively until Alex made his move offensively. And that was going to be where the window was. So JM waited, kept his feet safe. And then when Alex tried to advance the position, JM took off and ran out. So Jam's done a good job of using some more explosive movements to get over the top of the guard. And he's gotten a couple of looks. Oh, Alex working on this Armin guillotine over here. Jam has to bail to his back. Ten seconds to go. Looks like we're going to go to OT, man. We're going over the coin toss right now. Who's going to get to go first? No clear advantage during the match. No clear domination. So we go to the coin toss for those at home. J.M. Holland winning the toss, electing to take the back. Seatbelt position. Alex with his defense. Only one arm on the choking arm. Yeah, interesting. But he's got the high elevation. He's driving up JM with a 
close to a body Ooh, triangle. Oh, he's got that body lock with the Dan Severn oh. on the other side. Great attack by JM. I love that attack sequence. That really puts a lot of pressure in the low back, right? Yes. But the way he used the body triangle to force the, the belly down right there, that was a that was a grueling attack there by JM. That's going to pay off for him as the rounds progress. 30 seconds deep into this first overtime. JM Holland on the back. Alex starting to create a little bit of angle here. JM's holding double underhooks. Looking for that ride time right now. And he knows that this is a game. Good body try. Like Here's a nice well. angle now by Alex. JM, look out, JM. JM kept is the shaking elbow that one pushed off. to the side. <laughs> you see how he controlled the hand to keep the elbow pushed to the outside? Right. Stopped him from escaping his elbow. And this is a brutal position, dude. Yeah, he is taxing Alex right now. You saw JM shake it off when Alex had that moment. JM is confident in that body triangle with that leg in the in-between position. Yeah, very good. And I like that. Me too. When they stack. Yeah. I, I, oh, no. He lost Another it. Skate. Minute 21 is my ride time right there for JM. Unofficial ride time. Yeah, yeah. I've got the unofficial clock, so don't. if I'm off by a second or <laughs> two. Don't nuke us at Yeah, all. keep it to yourself, Chad. Yeah. <laughs> Alex elects the seatbelt position. JM Holland. Communicating, he's ready to go. Alex receiving last minute instructions from his corner. All right, so JM racked up 81 seconds of ride time in that opening round. We see the body triangle being utilized by Alex here. And he's got that butter, that top leg butterfly behind the knee. Good angle on the attack right here. JM knows this is a game of attrition. Yep, and JM's trying to push that body triangle to the low side, and he does. It's a nice job getting those feet involved. And it forces him to let go of that body triangle. JM started putting pressure on that yep. ankle there. And that puts that knee in an awkward position. It's almost yeah. like you're getting an inside heel hook. It's on a each. lot like that. Yeah, yeah. I've seen I've seen somebody blow their knee out like that. It's uh, you can't be stubborn if you're, you know. And you see a lot of guys at the higher level, they just kind of ignore it. But Alex, if you're a hobbyist player, I wouldn't recommend that. Switch that body triangle to the top. JM getting pretty close to getting his shoulder down, but Alex is aware of the time. Receiving again, having a coach who's aware of the time and has had experience in these qualifiers like oh. he's got right now is a big help Back to the body triangle. JM stacking. Now the body triangle starts to tighten. JM not able to create the angle that he wanted right there. Not quite. I would like to see him try to get those legs back involved. He had success with that opening them the first time. This is a really good ride here by Alex. Yeah, Alex, I think, of unofficially is, is leading in the well, ride starting time. starting to create an angle here. Thinking about switching off of this spider web. Gift wrap. JM ooh, spinning. Ooh. And he's out of there. And I think that was actually preordained instruction from the corner. I can hear their corner, Isaac Cordova from Orange, telling him that he was ahead by five Take seconds of ride time. Go for the sub now, because we're, we've accumulated enough ride time to be ahead. I like that. That's, and that, that's a smart strategy. That's experience in that's your experience. corner. I mean, Isaac, you know, he's a young guy, but he's not, he's not young to this game. No, definitely. And, and Isaac himself, you know, he's taken second place at a qualifier, got a special match in CJJ, which he won. Showed great poise and uh, submission, submitting his opponent there in that special match. But now here we are at the queues. So I got Alex for 105 seconds of ride time there. So puts him up by about 25 seconds. That's pretty substantial. Jam again to this body triangle. Foot behind the, behind the knee there with the butterfly. Jam holding tight. He's looking to steal some of that ride time back right here. And here goes Alex starting to win that head position battle. He's got to get his inside elbow to the ground. No, no, not that way, Alex. Oh, no. Oh, James switching off into that head and arm. 
Oh, that no. is a J and Arm specialty. Oh, uses, uses it to, it to get back into the, the D-Sev on the other side. Oh, face down, hips are in. Oh, brutal position, God. gets the tap. 58 seconds. That was brutal, dude. That was, JM's body triangle looks like death. That was a murderous appearing rear naked choke. Whoa. We're going to get the official That's as time. That's violent of a rear naked choke finish as you're just about ever going to see. I mean, if you want the epitome of what you want your rear naked choke to look like, personally, <laughs> I want mine to look like that. Yeah. That could have been made into a statue. Alex <laughs> now has his rebuttal. JM went first in the second round. Alex has got to tap him in 57, 57 seconds or less. Or JM wins this Or JM one. wins. That's right. So he knows he's on short time. He locks the body triangle. What are you going to do right here if you're, if you're JM? Are you trying to escape or are you trying to survive right here? Oh, if I'm JM, I'm surviving. You know, I already got the sub in the bag. I just need to survive for this 57, 58 seconds, and then I win, right? I don't want to try to expose myself if I'm JM right now and, and possibly give up a sub in, in less time and lose Ooh, the match. Oh, look at here. We're 30 seconds in. Again, close. Jam Holland doing the right thing, just keeping his arms up, yeah, protecting his neck. Alex making it hard on him. 45 seconds. He's got about 10 seconds left. And I, I think that is getting tight because that's getting some reaction. Oh man, this is gonna be close. 54 seconds. He's got three seconds to survive. That's time. Wow. Holy cow. Down to the wire, dude. And I mean, Alex spent it. There's no doubt about it on that one. Alex spent it. J.M. Holland advances in a brutal overtime period. Wow, tremendous victory for J.M. You know, if you're starting out in this tournament, you got to feel good about a win, but it also looked like that was an energy yeah, sucking match. I mean, you can see it in his legs as he comes off the mat. Yeah. You can see the fatigue in his legs just as he walks away. Absolutely. But man, it sure does feel good to get one under your belt, <laughs> though, don't it? It's worth spending a little bit sometimes. Absolutely. And here you comes know. Anthony Burchak. And he's he's doing that wrestling thing. He's smacking the neck, smacking the legs. We're going to go to uh, the winner of that last match, J.M. Holland. Stick by your people, but make sure they're earning it and fucking, I don't know, man. Just be your best every day. Fuck everything else. Fuck what, it. What happened in the match? I used my brains until I had to do something. Okay. These dudes are too strong out here, man. <laughs> they use this. What are you think, looking forward to right now? Getting air. All right, buddy. Thanks, man. I appreciate the opportunity, guys. Thank you. and I'm representing Kemp Final Lombard. Well, my coach Omar told me about it and uh, I jump on. Anthony Burchak, 10th line of Tucson, baby. We in the desert. I'm gonna win. Here to win. Here to be in June in Cancun, baby. All right, guys, if you're just joining us, we're at the 10th Planet Qualifiers for CJJ, 155-pound lightweights. I'm Mike Wilson, here along with my partner in crime, Brandon McCaffrey. This is going to be a tough matchup. You know, Burchant comes in with a lot of experience, but Lombard's a real player. He's going to give him, he's going to give him a hard match right here. If you guys are just joining us, we got... Like a little nice super little duck. Super duck attack. <laughs> and he ends up on the bottom oh, of a triangle. Right into a triangle. Oh, man. He needs to a pull super that duck into a triangle. <laughs> <laughs> Good defense. Anthony maybe switching off to the arm lock, but 
As soon as those feet uncross, now Ooh. Lombard's in position to Look escape. Look at this, and he's going to jump on the leg right here. Ooh, David with a good counter. Burchek separated the feet. Two. He escapes out. It, if he would have hit that triangle, super duck to triangle. <laughs> that was one to have to run back for sure. <laughs> that would have. That was Sports Center top ten. Oh man. Do you get into the top top ten on Sports Center for any super duck? Much less one that ends with a kill. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Got that level. Burchek again looking for the, the shot there from Lombard ends up in the front headlock. I think Lombard is actually uh, his gym, his academy. And, uh, oh, he's, yeah, he's yeah. training up there with Omar, right? Yes, yes. And his name's David. It's David from, from 10th Planet Lombard for our folks at home. Listen, this is the kind of commentary work you're going to get from a redneck, you know what I mean? <laughs> I just, you're lucky I don't just give them all nicknames. Uh, we're working on our technical <laughs> prowess show by show. We're bringing you here, guys, but we do appreciate you guys watching and rocking with us on this fine Sunday afternoon. Burchak pulls guard. Eddie gave him the 10-second the get-down warning, so Burchak decided to pull. If you guys are not familiar with Anthony Burchak, he runs 10th Planet Tucson. He's a UFC vet, Bellator vet, Ryzen Japan veteran, 10P black belt. He's done it all. He's done it all, man. And, and he's a good friend of mine. Great competitor. He's a father, gym owner. David from Lombard, I'm not familiar with. Do you know him, BMAC? I've seen him compete before. Okay. Uh, he's a handful, man. He, he's big energy. He has all, and we've already seen that. Yeah. Um, he's comfortable in the wrestling. I think we've seen him. I know I've seen him in two or three different tournaments. I can't remember if they were qualifiers or not. You know, the match is barely going, but we've already seen flashes of, of what you're talking about right there. And he's very comfortable out there with the veteran Burchak. And look at him smiling and laughing. Anthony always having a good time when he's competing. Good can opener attempt. Create a reaction. He's going, looking for that wrist Yeah, looking to trap wrist the wrist. Lock. Yeah, Pass it under the bottom. That handcuff position. Old school Ze Mario Sperry throwback. Ze Mario. Ze Mario. Você fez para. Burchek using the punch stiff arm. That's a, that's a classic case of doing what you got to do, Mike. Yeah, well, his <laughs> arm is definitely stuck behind his back that's in that, saying, that hammer lock position. I'm, and a, I'm tied up back here. I might have stick my fist in your throat. That's, I don't got know. A, that's a heck of a grip that David has got on there. Yeah, Burchek. Burchek finally gets it away, but. That was interesting because, you know, Anthony is Anthony's a strong guy. He's a good wrestler. And I was interesting to see David have that strength to uh, hold him down that position. Burchak trying to create some space, opens his guard up, and yeah. ends up in his half here. I think Anthony needs to not get unpatient. Not, not, he needs to be patient here. He needs to not rush his game and, this is a, this and end is up a in a passing. spot. This is good passing right here. It's a, it's a nice cross. It's not a super heavy cross face, but it's doing an effective job of keeping Anthony from turning in. Yeah, and Burchek exposes and the back. Exposes his back because of it. And now here it is. Anthony fighting off, not letting the triangle to go. He's escaping the hooks. Rolls, but he's got to continue rolling there. If he stays too long, he's going to... David's going to settle. Yeah, good adjustment by Dave. To get, good switch. Look at that little octopus hook to switch it off. Anthony was able to time that to get back to his half guard. Good back and forth. And if I'm Anthony Burchek right now, I gotta, I gotta think I'm not feeling the bottom as, as much as when I'm on top. If you guys have seen him compete before, I think that's a, he's more comfortable there. For sure. And but David's not really giving him giving that, up. that up for free. Right. Anthony trying a little oh, G-roll here. Yeah, Burchek going for that Kyle Terra roll. He's to get to his feet. Ooh, good little mat return. return. David's no stranger to the wrestling. No, no, he looks good. Yeah. He looks very tight, like he's got a surgical grip. His grips look very impressive. He's and got he the body triangle. And he looks intentional with his movements on the feet, which is something you don't see from a lot of jiu-jitsu guys. Yeah. yeah. i got to find out more about him. He's, he's putting on quite a show here. He's got the body triangle locked on the bottom side against Burchek. 
in the seatbelt position. Burchak's got the head position that he wants. I mean, he's creating the angle, but David's not really looking yes. to just let this go for Stepping free. Stepping on the foot, using that oh. foot grip to unlock the body triangle, and now Burchak is trying to keep it from locking again. Gotta but be careful there. He doesn't get getting... trapped, and he had to make the decision there. Yep. Do I want to get my arm trapped, or do I want to go back into the body triangle? Exactly. And I think he made the right decision. He did, for sure, because if that arm got trapped, that could have been it. Yeah, man, that arm trap is a is a real conundrum. Look at this straight jacket position. Here's the arm trap now. Oh man, there this, it is coming into effect. Bad. Anthony choosing to go belly down, not the way that you want to go there because oh, you're going tough, to the trap man. side. This could be a problem. He's and out he of there. Trapped. Yeah. Great submission victory by David. Got to get his last name, but tremendous showing of offense. Really impressive, BMAC, right? I mean, yeah. we're going to go to uh, to the winner of that match, David from Lombard. Uh, okay. It was a tough match. I knew I knew he was going to match my wrestling. I thought I had to be ready for it, ready for an opportunity. Our fist takedowns. I thought you could do it, smash it back in. I feel like I feel really comfortable there. We're good to get the finish. We're good. A tough match. <laughs> I know I got a tough match and I'm ready. Let's go, Chris. Yeah, I feel good. Always. Let's go, Alex. What's your name and who do you represent? My name is Jordan Worth. I represent 10th Planet Las Vegas. I'm a brown belt underneath Casey Halstead. Yeah, and then, uh, I messaged Scott Ross. I seen that they were uh, doing the next 10PQ, and I, I want to do every 10PQ that I could be a part of in my weight, so I messaged them as soon as I seen it, and I, I, got, a, I got a part on it. First team I've ever been in, Team Planet 1 and 3, and all the Team Team workout. I love you all. For me. I love you, bro. What? I've been sitting here, I haven't done a qualifiers ever. I did Team Duels, or I did one Team Duels. I'll be here for that one. I love this shit, we're here. We're in it. 40 years old, baby, about to get out. Knocked a drink over under the table, but Mike Mike just took care of it. He's a gentleman scholar. Okay. All right, guys, we are getting geared up here. We got a banger coming up. It's Jordan Worth. This is him in the white rash guard here versus Chris Vickers. So two up and comers, but both guys very experienced competitors. Both guys are very exciting. So really interested to see how this plays out. The winner of this one's gonna advance to get Mike John in the next round. Mike got a bye, he was the number two seed in the bracket. So we'll have Mike versus the winner of this match, Jordan Worth versus Chris Vickers coming up. Thank you guys for joining us once again. If you're just joining us with us, we're at the 10th Planet HQ doing the qualifiers for CJJ. Right now we have Jordan Worth taking on Chris Vickers. And BMAC, I've trained extensively with Jordan Worth in Las Vegas, uh, where I trained for five years. So I know his game quite well. Chris Vickers, we've seen compete before at the qualifiers. Vickers on the bottom with the Riddler attire. Yeah. And look at this, he's trying to Elevating. get after the legs right away. Onto the Ashi. Right into Ashi. And this might be playing right into where we want Jordan. Now the very good reap. And now Jordan looking to counterattack. And this is where Jordan's game is. He is a great counter leg locker. Ooh, Chris is in big trouble here. Jordan has that heel isolated over across the inside. And Chris just went from offense to defense real quick. Yeah, and there he goes, Jordan passing that 
foot to the outside, going outside Senkaku. Look at this. Jordan's flexibility is one of his biggest attributes. Very dexterous as well, not just flexible, but able to put his feet where he wants them. You know, crazy stat about Jordan, he competed last night. He's, he's not the only guy in this bracket. That could, uh, I think Finn is in the bracket, right? Finn Liu? Yeah, Finn Liu. Finn Liu is also in the bracket, competed yesterday at the Blue Belts. Dian being the lowest uh, ranked competitor in these qualifiers. But he looked great last night. He, he, didn't look like he, he didn't look like a Blue Belt to me. No, he definitely didn't. He showed out for his team. If you guys watched that yesterday, as Jordan Worth works this inside heel hook position. Oh, he's going to get this. Oh, that looks like it's isolated. Oh, that's it. He's time. got that's it. it right there. That's a tap. Great isolation work by Jordan Worth. Shout, shout out to Master Eddie. Showing off the 10 key sleeve. And so Jordan just competed last night at High Rollers in Las Vegas, took second place in their eight-man bracket, drove this morning here <laughs> to Los Angeles. Four-hour and a half drive from Vegas to Los Angeles this morning. Weighed in, made weight, and now he's on his first match. We're gonna take a I don't know. <laughs> um, before you, um, excited, super, super stoked. I got him in like a fucking Ric Flair. Woo! Got him in a Ric Flair figure four. I don't know, bro. I don't know. I'm on fucking mushrooms, bro. I just fucking blah. I'm on a little microdose, you know, just attacked him. Just what happened, happened. I look down, and all of a sudden, I'm in Ric Flair figure four leg lock. I look up, Eddie Bravo's like, this is like WWE shit. I was like, oh, cool. I got him done. Awesome. Easy work. Let's go. Eight-man tournament. Had three matches, lost in the finals. Drove here this morning. And wins a match in what? Two minutes? One minute? Yeah, less than two, for sure. I would say, yeah, in the minute to 90 seconds range there. And, you know, we saw Chris Vickers kind of start that one. Oh, we got the next competitor, Ben Eddy, coming up. I'm Ben Eddy. Currently out of Temple Mine, Austin. Uh, yeah, Victor Medina is on deck. Uh, my name is Kevin Ma. I represent Temple Mine Orange. Uh, I'm a brown belt under Mike John and John Cho. Uh, I'm here to have some fun. <laughs> Kevin Ma from 10th Planet Orange County taking on Ben Eddy, CJJ, former champion. Current still champion, 35, right? Did we ever I run that so. one back? Yeah, I, he I never so. lost that belt. So he is the current 135-pound CJJ champion, and he's here in the qualifiers for 155, taking on Kevin Ma from Orange in the White Rash Guard. Ben, one of my favorite competitors in the world to watch. Just nobody else does what Ben Eddy does. No, he is a unique individual. Some would say the best rubber guard player on the planet. I would say that. I feel comfortable saying that. You know, I think him and Jeremiah Vance are definitely up there, and, and Ben has just been on fire lately, coming back to competition after COVID. Well, I was talking to him this morning before the tournament started, and I said, how, how many Hindu Latines can we expect? Ha, 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 right? He goes, what's a 16-man bracket? Yeah, I should get at least two. Wow. wow. <laughs> and guys, if you, haven't, dead serious. if you haven't seen, oh, I bet he was. If you haven't seen that Hindulu team, good pass right here from Ben Eddy on top. I wouldn't be surprised to see him get into his Hindulu team right here. And pull guard with Yes. Him. Yeah. Pull that high rubber guard. I think Kevin knows... Good awareness, man. Ben tried to drag him into the game right there. Yep. I think Kevin knows Ben's A game, and he was initiating the guard pulls to avoid it, and now Ben is where he wants to be on and, his back. You know, man, the thing with Ben is, like, you know what he's going to do. Oh, yeah. But eventually, to beat him, you got to get down there. Yeah. And get and he you're just has setups. Every, if he gets an overhook, you're set up. If you're in the nitty-gritty with him, it's going to be a... It's, it's dangerous waters, man. It's just swimming with sharks, essentially. You're going into this game, and I think Kevin is well aware and is showing that he's not interested in a, a body lock or a clinch pass. He's going to try to pass on the feet and use his game. Kevin, I've trained with a bit in Orange County. He's got a good Baron Bolo, K-guard game. 
He's a brown belt. Ben Eddy going from one side Asha to the other attempt. Rolls through. A little scramble. Kevin elects to sit. Again, I think he's trying to take away that position. You see him insert that deep De La Hiva hook because he likes that for the Baron Bolo. He's getting instruction from his corner, Isaac Cordova. He's wisely trying to pass from a little bit more distance. Yes. See if we can get around this thing without having to get dragged into the deep waters. Yeah, and Ben Eddy is trying to pull him in to those proverbial waters. Ben Eddy here from Texas. Gabe Tuttle, Curtis Hembroff in his corner. Black Belt Weekend Summit at 10th Planet HQ. We had over 90 black belts on the mat this weekend, BMAC. It's incredible. Yeah, that was the most insane open mat of all time. Yeah, that was... I've never seen that many black belts at an open mat. Yeah, it is. It's one thing for, like, belt ceremonies and things like that, but everyone is rolling. You know, there was so many super fights happening at once. Ben comes up top position here. Some love from the crowd. We like to see action. Same position, roughly six minutes left on the clock. And Ben's corner, Gabe Tuttle there, calling for him to come forward and make some pressure during this passing. Yeah. Kevin doing a really good job of, of getting under with his De La Hiva, uh, reverse De La Hiva hook. Excellent job by Ben there, steps around. Forcing that pass, nice. Look at this knee cut, good recovery though. Bring back to De La Hiva for Kevin. He prefers that underhook grip because he likes that Baron Bolo. Kevin playing a good long game. Using the wrist control feet on the hips to keep Ben away. Inserts his hook. He's controlling the heel nice and low. Looking to invert under the leg there. He's looking to invert and maybe he wants Ben to pull that leg across his own hip so that Kevin can invert. Ben Trying comes to back to top position again. You know, I'm, I'm liking that Kevin is playing his game. Yeah, for sure. I, I like that. He's, putting He's dictating ben. where it's going to happen, at least. Exactly. Here comes Ben now starting to create some pressure on this pass. Good pressure, head down, same side. Just good, clean, technical black belt work right there by Ben Eddy. That's right. Fun we're trying to draw him into the truck, though. Oh, we're going to see that truck roll. I would not be surprised to see him crank on that calf. There it is. He's switching ben back and slowly forth. Slowly trying to climb. He's climbing. Here he comes. Great job of controlling his hip by staying on the knee. And now he's climbing up in a baseball bat. Oh my goodness. Oh boy. Could we see a twister right in front of Eddie Bravo? Ben Eddie came to make a statement today. And he is going to go for this twister. Oh, he's got the arm behind the head. Oh, he kicks free. Great timing. By Kevin. Kevin stayed patient and didn't panic. We got about what four minutes left still in this match? Roughly about four minutes, a little bit, a little bit more, a couple seconds more, but we've seen a lot of action already, man. It's been a high pace, and it is getting warmer by the minute in this room. No doubt. And these competitors are. And now Ben, it. look how quickly Ben got back into his heavy passing. Body lock. Head to the mat. Hips he up. That's the thing about just being a great passer. Man, eventually, eventually you start to chip through, man. You will. And, you know, Ben is not necessarily known for his top game and his fundamental pressure, pressure passing game. He's, he's known as the guy who's got the unbeatable rubber guard, you know, who tapped Wilson Ace in the finals and got his black belt and won CJJ, you know, his Indulu teens. Working a variation of that with that headlock control right now, but Ben looking well rounded. Oh, that doesn't surprise me though. I mean, it, it shouldn't surprise. He's no, a he's shouldn't. a great black belt. Of course, he of course. just has such a a strange specialty. Yeah, that just nobody can stop. So why not keep going back to it? Absolutely, and it's just for you know for people at home who are not maybe familiar with the rest of his work. See him going for this truck He's roll trying still. to force the truck roll. And Kevin retrucks. 
loses the hooks but comes out on top. He escaped his hip enough to threaten Ben's back there. Didn't have the truck control, but. Good hip escape and back on top. Deep breath from Kevin. I think the heat in the room is, get, is getting to these guys a little. We're just about two and a half minutes left of the regulation round. If you guys are just joining us, thank you. We're here at 10th Planet headquarters. The there. Doing the qualifiers for CJJ 155. Ben is just doing a great job of stuffing back into this headquarters position and then getting his head forward, putting pressure up towards the upper body. Explain the headquarters for, position for people at home. Yeah, so what Ben does is he steps, and you saw JN using it too, he steps that foot to the inside over here mm -hmm. and then stuffs the opposite knee. So he's trying to get into a position from which he can either knee slice or make some forward pressure or step more towards the mount, which is sort of what he's doing right now. And with this back exposed, like he's starting to expose the back, and we could see Ben try to re-roll this truck again. Yeah, I think that's where he set it up a couple times, and that pressure is pretty evident. I think we're going to see him climb the rest of the way up the body here and maybe start thinking about dragging him into a darse or even pulling him back to his guard if he can get that overhook deep enough where he feels like he can take a shot at because time's winding down here. Time is winding down. So somebody's going to have to take a shot or we're going to overtime. I think Ben's trying to, so Ben was doing this, this exact setup to me yesterday when we were rolling. I, I pulled him into this quarter guard and Ben had this position. He was trying to, he tries to pull that arm through. This is it. Oh, He's trying comes, to isolate it. You see? that head and arm control where he uses that to set up that arm and guillotine and then he goes to guillotine, B-Mac? Yeah, so if you try, if you take your arm to the outside to stop the head and arm choke series, then he uses that, uh, turns it into an overhook and pulls you down into his endulatine. But he's staying with this anaconda attack anaconda right here. Anaconda attack. And this is going to be pretty good. He's got the elbow isolated. Remain in 30 seconds. He's got to get that bottom arm in position. But by opening, using his leg to open that elbow, he's allowing himself a good look at this. Yeah, that top leg pressing down against the elbow, helping him lock that squeeze in even tighter. He's got to squeeze his legs and try to get that arm across Kevin's neck. He's got to get Kevin off of his flat back. That flat back is saving him just a little bit right here. Wow. Great job. So Excellent attack that. there. And we saw a lot of back and forth. You know, Kevin played his game, didn't have as many submission threats, but played his game with the De La Hiva, forced Ben to play the top position, and then Ben, towards the later parts of the round, really showed uh, dominance in passing, threatening those truck rolls. We're gonna go to the coin toss. Let me get my unofficial actually, timer ready here, AKA my phone. Eddie Bravo's actually given the advantage to Ben Eddie, and he chooses deferment. So if there's a clear dominant competitor in a match, that person gets the default choice of offense or defense. If there's no clear dominant player in the match, then they go to the coin toss, and Eddie Bravo is the one making that call Matt side. Decided to give it to Ben Eddie. Ben Eddie chooses to firm it. Kevin started on the back position. Playing a more traditional hook style here. Ben yeah. trying to fight for that head position. But I like that head grab. Yeah, I do too. That was to really nice work by Kevin. Put some torque on the neck and lift the chin. And just keep the head from going where Ben wants it to go. Right, which is to the mat. Not a big threat on the neck right now. Kevin with the left arm under. Yeah, it's forcing Ben to go belly down a little bit. And he doesn't have that body triangle, Ooh. so I think that might be to Ben's advantage. He's gonna use it to scrape and put his Look back to the mat. Oh, so oh in an arm arm in the triangle. Oh, wow. Oh, back oh, wow. to a very tight wow. triangle. He's gonna get that. Wow, that's so tight. He's got He's that. Wow. Wow. 53 seconds. 53 seconds. What a great transition. Man, that was spectacular. So Kevin transitioned 
Ben threw his back to the mat. He went arm bar. He put that up. hand underneath on the backside instead of trying to drag him back from the top to right. pull him into that triangle. And that triangle's tight. So Ben's got approximately 53 seconds to submit or Kevin wins this match. Right. Ben knows Body that there's urgency. Right he yeah, knows. he does not have time to cook him right here. He's got to no. get after him. He's got to go for it. He must. If he doesn't submit in less time than Kevin, then Kevin wins the match. And a huge upset, Ooh, I would ben. say. Look like he was making, he's making some progress right there in the hand fighting. Okay, reset it back. It's 25 seconds deep now. Ben going to the single hook. Ooh. Throwing him risky, up into the buck. But you gotta it is go risky. for it. it. Well, it's risky because it's a long play. Yes. You gotta have something quick right now. And he is going for that position. Kevin realizes it. Oh my he's God. Got the, he's got, the he's got 15 trap. seconds wow. to finish a twister. Wow. wow. Oh my God. He's going to finish seconds. a twister. 10 seconds. He can. Oh my goodness. Oh my, oh my God. Goodness. That was incredible. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> If oh, you... Ben Eddie. Wow. Ben Eddie always delivers, dude. That was incredible. Holy cow. That was incredible. Ben Eddie with the comeback submission in overtime via Twister. What a match, man. You know, Ben Eddie is the victor of this match. Kevin Moss stock goes through the roof, in my opinion. Wow. Incredible. We're gonna we're gonna take it to Ben Eddie, the victor of that match. What an incredible matchup. We're gonna take it to this guy. Yeah, I think we're actually gonna get him over here on the mic. All right, beautiful. I'd love to have him on the mic after something like that. That was so incredible. Come ben, over let's here, get ben. you on the mic right here, man. Right here, big dog. Ben Eddie joining you, us on the mic for Wanted those at home. At all. <laughs> ben Eddie, can you hear us, brother? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, awesome. Cool. Man, tell me about that incredible comeback submission. That was insane. Man, I just, uh, he kept on following me really well the whole match. He was just staying at my pace, and so I couldn't get ahead, but I stayed consistent. I didn't like super push it ahead of him. I stayed consistent. And I almost had a twister at the, in the regulation. Yes. And, and I did felt you feel it. something? You felt something, yeah. then that's why you went I back to I felt I could get it. I just didn't have the right hip angle at that time. But... You came up much higher on him in that round. That's the way that uh, Nate Orchard teaches how to get the uh, twister. Go up to the hip first, real high, up to the hip like you're going to split him. They got to kind of look back, and you just fight in there. Just ben, throw back with that elbow. Yeah. Tell me quickly, when you got submitted in the top of that inning, Fuck, what were yeah. you thinking? What were you thinking? Uh, fucking like, I was getting out really well. I had Again, I had to super commit to get out. And when you super commit, you also give stuff up. And my arm right. just barely got caught, and I was like, oh. So I just knew I had to do it faster. And I've been, I'm pretty good with time. As long as I got energy and I can go, then... I know how to get something done under a certain amount of time. At least try for it. Well, it was phenomenal work, Ben. I can't wait to see you next round. Next round, you'll get the winner of this one. So, okay. get over there, get your breath underneath you. Yeah, yeah man. All right. Great job, dude. Thanks, Super match. proud of you. Thanks. All right. Man. Wow, guys. <laughs> My heart rate's going to be like 140 right now. I don't even know <laughs> how. Here's the thing, is if you've watched 10 Planet Qualifiers before, guys, You've seen amazing, spectacular, viral sensations. And I think we just saw another right there. Well, you know, it's, a, it's special because it's a twister in this environment right in front of Eddie. Oh, yeah. But it's also special because it was a twister in like this dramatic moment for him. He had Dude. to have something, and he chose a twister. I mean, you I, know, I questioned his strategy there. I really did. I thought that was going to take too long for him to set up. Really? You, you know what? You did say that. We, yeah. we noticed he went to the single hook. And man, it was just incredible. But we got to go to this next matchup with Thien Lu from 10th Planet Pasadena taking on Victor Medina from the 10th Planet Freaks. And Thien Lu competed last night, Brandon. At yeah, the 10th he Planet. looked good too, man. The he didn't just compete. He looked like uh, a full level better than pretty much everybody he rolled with last night. Right. And, that, and so that was the 10th Planet team duel. Look at duel. this. Matt Return. And Matt Return. 
Victor reached over his head and gave Lou that slick little duck under the back. The mat return. Riding a little high right there. And Lou, again, the bottom man on the totem pole in terms of rank in this, in this bracket. Oh, we got a little overzealous right there. Committed to the attack on the neck too quickly and lost the position. But, you know, I'll tell you something about Lou. If you watched him last night, like very we relaxed. did, Brandon. Very relaxed. Doesn't, doesn't sweat losing position. Remains very composed. And for a blue belt, that's impressive. Very strong wrestler, man. And we yes. saw that in several of his matches last night. We've already seen it in this match. Victor trying to work the head as Lou just stays committed to this knee slice pass here. There's a nice oh, inversion nice into Krasashi. He's going to expose the heel. Lou, no stranger to leg locks. Yeah, we he saw him make some good plays last night in the I legs. believe he hit a couple, and now we're seeing an outside Senkaku position. Lou looking to separate the feet, turn that heel down. And look at that. And Excellent escape the composure. knee line. Really good. Great defense. And you know, Lou trains under leg lock master Eric Ramey in 10th Planet Pasadena. So seeing his composure there is And look not at this. Lou gives his head into the position here. Just feeling confident he's going to be able to wrestle, wrestle up with up. it. And he does. Limp arm. Dogfight, limp arm. Just felt like a simple way for him to get back to top position. Underhook and into the pass. Tremendous. Here comes oh. the buggy. Oh, boy. Lou with the frame heavy on the chin. It's not there yet. It's not there yet. Victor's too flat. Yeah, he's going to get flattened out. And he gets that knee put on his belly. Lou looking good, looking to pass that elbow across, expose the back here. But he, if he, he looks determined today. He looks like he's a little more hunting for position and... Maybe we saw him conserve. You know, I was worried we were going to see him tired today because he competed last night, but maybe he conserved last night. He's going to wrestle up again, man. Yeah, he's going to go that low he underhook. He just sticks his head in there. He, please grab my head so that I can get on this single leg. Going up. There he goes. Inversion. And back to the little, top. Little sit through. Victor takes the bait, attacks got, the head. Got Victor to sit to a hip and go for the head. Lou with that body lock. Lou, very good passing this direction as it gets in tight. Look how he clears that inside space with a little knee pinch. Let's see where he gets that head position. If he get it to the mat, go side to side, but it's back up in the butterfly. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's got that passing put together to both sides yet. But he looks really strong to his strong side. Yes, know? yeah. And he's going to try the other side here. And you can see Victor able to pummel through and close yeah. that off a lot more easily. He's got good angle to regard and... Now we're gonna see him climb his legs. All right. There we go. New York position to now. New York. Doesn't have that front. There's he's starting to slide that right arm in as a frame now. Think about switching to that meat hook. He doesn't like the pressure of it. Crackhead control here. Comes the dead orchard. Oh, Lou tried to slip that right arm out, and he does. He had his frame set in defensively. Pulls Ashi. Tries a little back step inversion, doesn't have the knee line. He's going to think about coming up. A little scramble, create some positioning. Medina looks good. He, he always looks good. He always comes out and puts on a good show. Medina, I like those aggressive snaps from his butterfly. I believe brown belt from... I think so, yeah. Out. Yeah, I believe he's I brown belt. I think that's belt. right. Again, Lu on the bottom. Blue belt from Pasadena. Low man in the bracket, but... Showing that he can hang. Okay, this is a much Ooh, better choking position here for Victor. He's got the arm in a much better position. This could be That's a this could anaconda. be trouble here. That's a deep anaconda. He's got that leg over the top arm to help and he's got pressure. And he's got a good squeezing position, too. He's not really out of position with his squeeze. No, his angle's nice. He's got Lou down on his side. I think that's getting tight. I think so, too. I think he's going to finish. Oh, Ooh, it's coming out. It's coming out. Lou with a good bump, enough explosion. I, I think he's in angle. trouble right here, Mike. Starting to lose Lou, his grip. Yeah, I think Lou's oh, going to survive this be one. All right. I think Lou got enough in position, but Victor is not ready to let that go, and I don't blame him because that's a great control. He had to, to the move back. on. Let's see if we can he can follow him through without getting entangled in the legs. Lou, Lou. inverting and getting on an attack here. Back and, and I think he's he's got the knee on yeah, trap. He does. He does. He's going to force that roll, and we may run into some problems here. Yeah, we do. 
Very Good. hard to stop that, but Scott Ross, the ref, coming in at the right And he came moment. in emphatically, too. Yes. He came in with confidence, like, confidence. yo, I'm the referee. Yo, stop moving stop right now. Don't right move. Right now. <laughs> and that's what you want. You, you have want to have that, that man. Oh, Luke going right away, exposing, rolling back through. Victor going to send up, send us back over to the same spot. Trying to clear that knee line, he does. Lou coming up, ready to pass. I think Lou would have liked to have had the space to force that position a little bit more both times, but... Well, you never have infinite space in a fight, though, you know? Definitely not, definitely <laughs> not, you know? And I think he recognized that and didn't want to burn energy. We're going to run into the end of the mats, or we're going to run into the cage, or we're going to run into this car <laughs> right here. <laughs> like ADCC, where we're, we're going to go into the crowd, <laughs> you know? It's all good fun. Oh, headlock roll. You heard the instruction coming from Lou's corner, Eric Ramey. He said, be specific, Lou. Don't, don't just throw something up just to create movement. And look at this. And Lou following that advice. On top. Looking to take the back. to the back. Got the arm trapped during the movement. Doesn't have that Ooh. bottom hook, though. It's going to trade crucifix. off to the same crucifix position we saw earlier. We did see a finish from here earlier. And I like oh, how he sits them up to good. take the back. Yeah, that's the right move there sometimes is to sit them up. That was good work, man. You know, he, he didn't get the kill off of it, but he did get into a full single hook position now. He's going to isolate this wrist. He's going to look to lock hands. And there it is. Oh, I think this hands. is a problem for Medina. I think Lou's going to spend it. It's not there yet. Oh, good job by Medina defensively. He's trying to use that free foot to uncross Lou's feet. So his hips can escape. Oh, and he, when he does that, he kind of exposed the chin. Lou lost the hooks, but it is around the chin, not under. I, oh, man. I think Medina's going to survive it. There he goes. He's out of there. Good survival. Getting some love from his corner. Gabe Tuttle and from the Freaks. We're right here at this two-minute mark, and it's still anybody's game. Very tightly contested. Getting into this heavy passing here. Good man, Lou, I'm impressed, dude. He's just showing that he belongs. You know, for a blue belt, that's that's no easy task. It's not that uncommon anymore, is it? Like, it used to be that was unheard of for a blue belt to get in here and even have a good match with a black belt. Absolutely. But, you know, as, uh, as the sport evolves more and more and the higher level athletes start filtering in, and the Man. younger they start. Yeah, it's yeah. just uh, rank means less and less these days. Really good back take opportunity for Medina here. And there he goes with two nice. hooks and the triangle. Locking under the knee with that triangle. Lou feels it. He's trying to move his leg. There's intricate positioning here, guys, at home. If you're newer to jiu-jitsu, you got to know the battle that Lou just did beautiful Excellent work. Excellent there by Medina. Great trap. Lou's doing a great job of isolating the leg and trying to get his right arm back. Oh, but man, Medina, this is a big problem. Medina is, and there's Lou's arm back, so he's going to be able to defend oh, again. Man. Lou put together a series of defenses that were countered by Medina. Victor's had a couple of sharp offensive plays here. He had a couple of really good looks on that front headlock series. Yep. Really good. I thought he was going to finish the Anaconda. Yeah, that Anaconda did look tight there for a minute. But Lou... Finding a way. Stay in this match. Coming up in a... Lou shuts position. him off on the chair set. Lou sitting Ooh, into deep. that... Ashi position where he rolls through. He's going to try this Ashi on the other it's side now. Victor very aware and very savvy in the leg lock exchange there. He knows when to give up the sweep as opposed to getting entangled. And th again, those are just series of mini battles that we're seeing in this match. Ten seconds left in regulation before we go to OT, and I think we are going to see that. And man, you know, you want to see finishes, but when it goes to OT and then you have a, a match like what we just saw with Ben Eddy, and Kevin Ma. <laughs> yeah, I know you, people how can are critical. You hate, how can you hate on people overtime critical, like that? But I, I really like the overtime like, rounds. Like, pe people at home, would you really rather see two jiu-jitsu guys try to wrestle instead of what we just saw with well, the Well, what you don't want to see is anybody 
an athlete trying to game the rules, no matter right. what the rules are. Absolutely. So, you know, whether it's EBI overtime or a point system or a dis- referee's decision or we're counting submission attempts, you don't want to see somebody try to game the system. That's that's the thing that ruins the rule set. Absolutely. Is when yeah. the athletes start and, doing and, that. And there is no perfect rule set, but, man, am I partial to this one. Because, yeah, I again, like this. It, it creates – It's definitive. It's definitive. It ends it. And we were talking about that last night. Oh, as we see – Lou on the back. I think he's, he's gonna got take, that grip. He's got a decent he's, grip there. He's going to go palm to palm. I think that's a better choke. play. I like that short choke. To force the chin across and then maybe can transition. And Medina's fighting Victor it off though. nice. I believe Lou's still maintaining a two hooks. And I would like to see Medina use that foot. And there he goes to unlock that positioning of the legs. Medina looks very, I mean, he's on his side. He's it's not a lock in a body triangle. triangle. He's, got, he's got a little space there. In that there triangle. it is. There's and the comes turn. comes top and gets the escape. Calling that 49 seconds. Unofficial ride time, 41 seconds. Now we're going to the bottom of the first overtime round. Medina's going to be looking to try to submit. Lou already creating a really good angle for himself here. Yeah, he he, he had a good angle from the jump. He threw himself back at a well, nice Medina angle. trying to save it, but Lou's starting to get his head to the mat. Yeah. Victor got to save this head position here. Victor is keeping he, that body triangle. Hey, that's going to help. And that is what kept that alive there. Nice retention. That was a good opening uh, escape attempt there by Lou, but Victor very composed. Good footwork by Lou right now to unhook his leg. And now we're going to see some leg pummeling from Lou on the bottom. Got about 10 seconds before he matches Victor's ride from round one. Or sorry, matches Lou's ride. Oh, here's a position that's kind of awkward. I wouldn't call maybe, that guard. He needs to clear that arm think around. About that choke right there. Yeah, that like that's like a mounted guillotine. Yeah, dude. Look at this. How, this is how uh, Adolfo Vieira got caught in uh, the UFC. Switches into Anaconda. Yeah, this he's is got live. A good... This is live. Okay, he's now out. he's out. Okay. You were saying uh, Rodolfo got caught. Yeah, I yeah. think that's how he got caught. Yeah, it's off did. of that um, that truck position, or you have the back, and then you slide off into a front head, and the arm's trapped on the other side. Right, that's a powerful grip. Yeah, that's what we call it, a power guillotine. Seen, uh, yeah, I've seen um, Rafael, or no, uh, Figueredo from UFC Flyweight hit that as well. Yeah. Pedro Munoz, shout out, one of my Dude, boys. He's, he's hit a, that a few he's times. He's got one of the best guillotine oh, games man. in the world. I got to train with him in Sao Paulo for a little bit. Nice. It's animal. He's a great guy, man. Train with him in Vegas as well as Black House. Good dude. As we see Lou back on the back for top of the second round. And he's got palm to palm again right here. And we got to have we got to figure that Lou is up on ride time. Actually, I think I got that backwards. Oh, okay. That's yeah, right. I think I got that backwards. So I think Victor is up 70 seconds to 49. That's right. Okay. So Lou Lou is down on ride time and he's at the top of the round. So strategy wise, what what's your go-to here, Brandon, knowing, knowing what we know about this? I'm a believer in the spider web position from overtime. We haven't seen that. Yeah, we okay. haven't seen anybody choose Ooh, that. See back to the mat here. Lou does a good job saving Get that little vampire grip and pull him back across. Yeah, this double. He kind of went, looked like he went double under, but might just switch his arms. But I, I definitely feel like when you, to answer your question, we got these grinding. Oh, and here comes out with the escape. But Luke can use it, take the back, uh, and slides out. About 60 seconds of ride time right there. Okay, so we got to figure, you know, Lou has more ride time right now, but that was the top of the second round of OT and now Victor's turn at the bottom of the second round of OT. And, and it looks and like he is going to go spider He's going to go spider web. I, I like I this. like this decision, man. The only way out only way out as long as the offensive player does his job, the only way really out of spider web is to let go of your grip and start escaping your arm. Yeah. You got to go through the the danger. Cowabunga it is sometimes. Yeah. And wow, Lou like with that. the quick escape. 2 seconds. Oh man. Lou had a strategy on that one. 
Let me tell you, man, that really changes things. That Moving changes into things. The third round here. Huge. The end, Lou. Slings the ride time heavily back into the favor of Lou. Top of the third OT. This is the last inning of OT. I think we'll see him try to max his ride time right here. Yeah, that might be the strategy. Oh, man, I'm wrong. He's going but right after Lou the gym. Going for the kill. He's going to have a hard time following here. Good roll oh, through. Oh, man. Still, Kept that far gonna... side for a second. Uh, I feel like that job. was a mistake by That Lou, might have man. been a mistake. That's interesting. You know, BMAC, you said you would go ride time right there. Yeah, I mean, if I got to advance to the next round. Yeah, that's you know, it. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get an all-expenses-paid trip to Cancun. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? So I'm trying to win the game that's been presented to me. Medina, He's gonna trying get to this. stay tight. Oh, maybe not. Victor really getting a good ride here. This is going to be close when oh, it goes down, yeah. man. Victor needing at least another 20 so seconds, I would say. He's starting to slip those hips. This is going to come down to the Oh, water. my God, he got his hips back. Look at Victor's ride. Lou wow. is spending everything to get out of this. And Victor is just staying glued. Just phenomenal back control against a wild athlete down there. This is getting super close. I think Victor's going to end up winning this thing on ride time. He's probably got about 10 seconds left that he needs to hit right here. Again, don't quote me. I don't have the official times here. These are estimations, folks, by us at the commentary booth. I mean, I think Victor's got him. I, I do, too. I think we've surpassed the time. But Victor receiving encouragement from Eddie Bravo to go for the finish. Because why, why leave it up to debate at all when you could just finish it? Yeah, I mean, I, I think at this point it's a foregone conclusion. I think he's got it right, Tom. But, you know, strategically, if I'm the coach, I'm yelling at him to let him go and stop wasting energy. Let's move uh, on to the next that's round. that's what I would be looking for. And, you know, he's receiving some instruction to maybe try to submit him right now. It's just different strokes for different folks. But when you, when you coach people at a high level in these big tournaments where there's a lot at stake, you got to, you got to, you, sometimes as the coach, you got to make the hard call and tell the athlete, hey, we got to be smart here and not, not waste energy. Yeah, I'm... By my calculations, which remember, I am from Alabama. <laughs> but by my calculations, we've got a pretty clear winner there with Victor on the ride time. Yeah, I think it's pretty About 40 clear. seconds. And indeed, that is the case officially. Victor Medina from 10th Planet San Diego, the Freaks, taking the dub via ride time and OT. We're going to go to him with the victory. And here is Victor Medina. We're gonna bring him in, guys. We're getting some instruction from uh, Master Eddie. We're gonna take a brief intermission, but first we're gonna bring in Victor Medina. Victor. Hey, Vic. Awesome that we're gonna be able to have a word with the man after his oh, victory. I, I know you're tired, hey, Victor. I know you're tired, dog. What's I'm up there, big dog? Can you hear us all right? For sure. Dude. Awesome, man. Tell me, how do you feel after that win? I'm fucking tired. That tired. was a war. It was. Wearing the bloody lip gums action. Was that a... Are they bloody? A little yeah. bit. Yeah. A little bit. It looks good on you. Thank yeah. you. I got a bunch of hair, too. <laughs> <laughs> you wear it nice, brother. So tell me, man, how, how did that feel going to Triple OT, you know, going through the whole... Six rounds. I gotta get that water in. Uh, it's hot in here. I think that was my first time going overtime. Okay. Ever? Yeah. Wow. No way. Uh, maybe like a blue belt or something. <laughs> really awesome. So, work. a question that I had for you. Yes, so, he made that quick escape oh, in yeah. that second round. With the arm bar? Yeah, it puts you behind. Yeah, I'm not really. My back control is probably better. Yeah, your back control was phenomenal in that third round. I do bad with like people with shorter arms. And I didn't think of that. And yeah, that's yeah. why he's, he's got out, that so. short, yeah, thicker that, arm. Did that put some pressure on you, though? You knew you yeah, had to. Yeah, yeah, so I going into the to the final round was the strategy: look, just hold on to this guy hold no on. matter what, yeah. or were we trying to ki kill him and put him away still? Uh, hold him, and then at the end, try to kill him. Yeah. And he escaped. Oh, sorry, sorry. Who, who are you here with today, Victor? I'm with my 
Who's teammate coaching Matt you? Cox, Alex Matt Randy, Cox. and Gabe. Uh, oh, yeah, Gabe. Yeah, I know Matt Cox. Matt Cox, good dude. Local competitor. Gabe's a... Uh, Gabe Tuttle. Also a freak, but he moved to Austin. Yep. Still love him, though. He's a traitor, dude. He's a Creonche. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Hey, man, if you've Tough been to Austin, match. you can't blame him. I know. It's a nice place. So, looks like ben you're going to see next. Ben Eddy in the next round. Sure. Somebody you're very familiar Ooh. with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your strategy coming into a match like that? Uh, just his usual pass. Pass his guard, like, because it's easy, you know? Just kidding. <laughs> 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 no, uh, yeah, just keep attacking the same matches I had right now. They're, they're pretty similar, I think. Do you feel like there's anything you specifically have to avoid? Like you have to stop yourself from getting pulled into his, his, his really guard. specific game, yeah. right? Get into his guard. So um, you got to pass his guard. Yeah. But you got to avoid yeah, his guard. But, yeah, but I have to go in. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's uh, pretty quite confident. Quite a conundrum. Pretty confident going there. Good. But should be exciting with him. Yeah. Awesome, like man. Guy. We're, really looking, we're really looking forward to seeing you back out there, man. Great job, Victor. Thank you, man. Let you get some rest. Tremendous get victory, recovery. brother. Nice meeting you guys. Thanks for joining us. Guys, this next matchup. This is going to be a good one. So, this, look, this there's only chalk one. left now. That's right. You know, we uh, the wheat has been separated from the chaff at this point. People right have. The first round. Wow, that is an Alabama expression, if I've ever hey, heard That's one. not the Bible, man. <laughs> Come on, dog. <laughs> you know the heathens are watching this. Man, this guy really needs no introduction, but we got to bring him up. Nathan Orchard received the bye in the first round as the top seed in the bracket. Coming back in a 155. Normally, Nathan is a guy who gets the invite because he's won it before. Yes. But Keith Kikorian has been on such a tear lately representing winning CJJ. I'm sorry, EBI, right? He won yeah. EBI. And then uh, winning the ADCC trials, West Coast trials at 66 kilos. He got the number one seed to uh, for 10th Planet for the for the CJJ World. So, yeah. I mean, Keith's you got to feel that way. I mean, he's arguably, yeah. very strong yeah. argument is he's the number one 66-kilogram player in the world right now. Yeah, he's in the mix. There's no doubt about it. I mean, he's officially ranked by Flow Grappling, and, uh, you know, everyone loves the guy. And uh, so he's got the official spot. So Nathan has to go back into the qualifier. Yeah. And if you're standing across from him, man, that's got to be an interesting Listen, take. I competed against Nathan Orchard one time. Really? I was a brown belt. Wow. And it took me about two weeks to recover from competing oh, against no. Nathan Orchard. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Dude, man, that is, you he know. He snapped me up. He's he's a monster. But, you know, Manning's got an interesting game that, yeah. could, that could play. I mean, we saw uh, Manning's opening round. He I made mean, a very Orchard-esque play. He did. Orchard uses that arm drag from standing to go straight to the choke. He did it with the pass-by. Yeah. Or a, sli a slide-by, I guess a lot of people call it. And, yeah. Uh, I think Manning's got the kind of game that can get out here and he can at least he can at least put the work on Nathan Orchard. The problem with Nathan, if you're up competing against him, is Nathan's sword is just sharper than everybody else's. Yeah. I, what impresses me most most about Nathan Orchard is his timing, and I think that is the difference of uh, you know caliber black belts when you're talking about the elite of the elite. Everybody had a black belt, you know, they're legit. They're Look everyone's at this. good. Wow. Nathan goes to that arm drag from Ends standing. Up on bottom. He does. And Na that was Manning good timing by Manning. I was just counter. talking about Nathan's timing. You had to know that you had to know that Nathan was gonna come out and throw that right away. Yeah, absolutely. I Manning's mean, he's, on his head. Manning seems unintimidated. Uh, Nathan is he's got such interesting plays from the bottom. Like he doesn't do anything that you expect him to do. He's all. It's like you're always under attack, even when he's on the bottom of mount. An easy sweep Good there. Over under, from the butterfly. A nice dayashi. Man, he gets up and smiles at him. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan did not smile back. All no, <laughs> he was all serious with it. And you know, again, the timing of Orchard is something really to behold. We just saw that little dayashi using that double collar tie. That's what he likes to use in that position. And go underhook. Yeah, Nathan is a strong wrestler. You know, we think about him as a leg locker and a guard player mostly, but... Well, when you have a name, when you have a submission from close guard... Look at that arm oh drag. Man, we, we talked about it at the top of the broad, at the top of the match. Nice work there by Manning, starting to slide out. And he's under attack, but he's not, he's not wilting yet. He does give up the guard pass, though. Now a full mount and a... Is that a punch choke there by Nathan? It is. And he means it. 
He's trying to submit him with that. That may be, that may be more like full Ezekiel yeah, style right it's there. It's all the way over. And he's squeezing, putting oh, his chin man. in, and it, now the hips come into play. It is clearly Manning tight. Manning bridges and himself Manning back out of really there. really good defense. Pretty happy with his escape. Yeah, and you can gotta tell, be. I he's, mean, he's feeling himself. He's a, he's a confident kid. He's very humble. He's very quiet. But he, he believes in himself. And he's got a good reason to, man. He comes out of a great camp down there. There's a lot of good guys coming out of that Jacksonville spot right now. So a lot of up-and-coming guys. Yeah, they do have a lot of good dudes coming up out of there. Sam Barbosa. Yeah. Uh, Brianna just won the PGF qualifier. So she's going to be... She's another one that's on the come up down there. Steven Coslo. Coslo. Coslo's man, a savage. Man, he's an animal. Coslo strangled me in a qualifier once. <laughs> Shout out to him. He's a good dude. But Nathan goes for kind of a little bit of a sacrifice throw, trying to drag Manning into his rubber guard as Manning countered it. Manning's passing looks pretty good, though. He's holding together well, tries to roll over. Man, if I'm Manning, I got to go back to that. I got to fight for that top position right there. I like the way Nathan's countering that underhook by reaching across to that far hip. Puts a lot of pressure. Turns it into a shallow underhook there for Manning. Got to be careful. You can get your shoulder ripped right there. Absolutely. I really like Orchard's style of how he blends multiple martial arts with his jiu-jitsu. Judo, yeah, he's just Japanese so well rounded man. Aikido. Yeah, we've seen him hit wrist locks and wrist. Oh, yeah. You know. He had a takedown with the wrist at combat jiu-jitsu one time. That was time. unbelievable, totally. Like, you would see that in, like, a Seagal movie. Yeah, and it, was, be like, it was that kind of movement. And jiu-jitsu guys are going to be like, oh, that's bullshit. Oh, nice arm that. spin attempt. Orchard. And look at Manning. Is getting, he is out. not intimidated. Man, no, he's not. Oh, man, are and we going to see the... Are we going to see the namesake? <laughs> I think we might. Because he's got the angle. He's got the He's foot. got a great angle. On. He's oh, yeah. got that forearm frame oh, yeah. on the inside. Yeah. And here come that leg is sneaking around already. Man. It's going to happen. He's bad. double bagging. This is bad. Almost. You know, this is not going to be a position that Manning hasn't felt before, but has he felt Nathan Orchard's before? And that's, that's a different level. It's a different level than what you may be used to in the gym for sure. When people talk about rubber guard and, you know, there's a lot of people who feel like it's not a position that they see a lot in a high level well you just haven't experienced it at a high level my friend and Nathan Orchard is that high level one of the top guys in the world again a namesake world famous move named after him because he's hit it so consistently yeah he was really the f one of the first guys that was like making this part of his system it wasn't an accident when he got there no think about him uh, Brian Debs actually was hitting this on black belts back in the day, you know, little barn cat. Another guy who really made this, uh, gave this position some authority. And Brian Brown in Manning's corner. Brian, of course, a 10th Planet black belt as well. He's, he's calling for Manning to get good posture. He said, you're a statue right now. That's great advice from his corner. That's what he needs to be. He needs to be stoic. And, un and here he comes, the, the clear of the head here attempt. Manning doing a great job. Orchard just got such control and patience Ooh, from Manning's this Manning's got to be careful here. This is, the guy, this is where Nathan starts to put it. Again. Excellent posture there by Manning. Keeping that figure four from locking up on top of the shoulders. They're under the, under the shoulders. You're going to be able to posture, and here he goes. Nathan, though, trying to create some flower sweep style pressure here. Into the legs off of it. Manning aware though, an excellent, excellent defensive plays. But I mean, that was real sharp offense that was thrown at him from a very, very dangerous player. And so far tonight, we've seen you know some guys that are not well known, lower belts, purple belt right here, Manning, brown belt, and Kevin Ma give some legends kind of of of, of CJJ and Nathan Orchard and Ben Eddy some trouble. You know, surprising me. It, you know what, man? We're not just seeing that with the 10th Planet guys. That, that's happening all over the country now. All over jiu-jitsu. You know, you think about Jay winning the trials as a blue belt. Jay Rod. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, his brother, Nicky Rod, winning as a blue belt as well. Man, look how quickly Nathan jumps ago. on those overhooks. He had, I mean, he had a chance to be on top and, and work some game right there, but he quickly runs back to his overhook guard. Comes Nathan position. has a 
just vicious attack on the legs there. He's, he attacks with authority. Look at that straight ankle. That's a lot of pressure. Nathan knows how to get his hips in a position. Manning just unfazed by it, though, and now he's passing the guard. And here he comes. He's got the elbow exposed there. Little grip on the head. Manning's, Manning knows how to finish when the time comes here. And the time is coming. It's only about three minutes into this Look at match. this. He's running him into this anaconda here. I don't think he's got the angle there. He didn't have the angle, but, man, he took a shot. He forced Nathan to bridge towards that position to escape it. Puts Nathan flat on his back now in the bottom of north-south. Now getting up to his knees. Manning puts the cross Man, face in, looking to turn him back. Look at heavy cross face. He's got those double cow catcher-like position. Oh, showing <laughs> that us was a bad idea. Love, huh? That oh, was a bad idea. I think idea. we're going to see a turn up from Nathan. <laughs> I don't think he liked that. I do not think he liked that. Got to watch out here. Nathan's dangerous from this position. Yeah. I've seen him take people's backs. He throws in that top leg over the top and then scoots his hips out. Yeah, octopus He'll, guard we call this. Look at that easy reversal. Yeah, see, he got that angle so well under him. And now we, <laughs> see, some, now we see some love back. One back. As inevitably it would be. And, and now we are definitely <laughs> in that point where we're going to see these guys really start going. And oh. there's that beautiful arm drag. Leaves the leg out to the back, body triangle in. Man, you got to think that Nathan is about to throw down the thunder here with Man, 90 seconds left. His timing, he throws change-ups. And I use a baseball analogy because he throws off speed. He goes fast, he goes slow, and he mixes up the tempos like you would want a mixed martial art fighter to do in a fight. In, in any sport, man, if you, you know, my basketball coach growing up, when he was teaching us how to cut and, and get open, you change speed and change direction. Right. And Nathan is just excellent at that. And it's both of those things. It yes. is the speed and directionally, you're not standing still in the same spot. You know, and that, that applies in jujitsu. If you need to get open, if you need to make a play, you got to change speed and change direction. 100%. Angles are created off of that. As we know, in a combat sports, the 45 degree angle is king. Nate created a beautiful one to take this back, and he's working here. Short time, about a minute remaining, a little bit under. Nathan's back control looks very good, but Manny's survival skills, I mean, this has been a close match. Nathan's trying that to drive hit. a spine yeah. lock yeah, here. He's got that spine buster in where he gets. Oh, and he gets uh, under the chin with it. Oh, oh that's going to be death. Yeah. It's oh, death. it puts him out. Yeah. Short. Quick little reaction from that spine buster attempt, and it put Jordan on his heels and allowed him to make a little mistake. Yeah, well, he got him stretched out. He had him stretched. Got that spine long, and the chin was up just for a flash there. Man, that was a great finish in short time, about 20 seconds left. And, yeah. uh, man, these We're going to try to get Nathan over here and talk to him for a second. That would be tremendous. I mean, I wonder if he knew the time was that short. We're going to have to ask him and see because it was almost at an OT. I mean, Jordan came with a really, really Manning. good Manning. showing today. Yeah, Manning, great work sorry, out yeah, there. Manning. That's okay. Manning did great work out there. He showed that he could stay on the floor with Nathan. And I think, man, a young purple belt on the come up, I think he's going to take that as a moral victory. You know, there are no moral victories, <laughs> but I think he's going to be. Come on in here, Nathan. Come on, Nathan. Let's talk to the talk to the number one seed here. Sure. Can you hear us, brother? Yeah. Awesome, <laughs> man. Tell me what you're feeling after that one, right down to the wire. Dude, I'm just trying to have fun, do some martial arts. You know, that's all I'm here for. You know, acting like I'm, uh, you know, throwing knives in my backyard or cracking a bull whip. Or, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, uh, it's the most intense test of my martial arts, this. I fucking love it. It's great. It's the Beautiful. best. Yeah, so we saw, we saw he kind of simulated a strike once he got top position. And uh, when he did it on the broadcast, I went, oh, that might have been a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> well, I started it, to be fair. So. Okay, I, okay. Well, I don't think we saw yeah, that. We must have missed that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that was okay. me. Let's okay, so all say, in good spirit. Yeah, yeah, of course. That did cause a turn up in the, in the speed and well, the pace of the match. A, right. <laughs> and see, that's the thing about this shit. Look, guys, jujitsu is one thing. And, and this is something that I'm not... I don't know. I, it is what it is. Actually, I'm learning to really love it. 
I'm better at CJJ than I am JJ. You know what I mean? So interesting take. Give me those straight. Look, these guys are all tough. Every single motherfucker here. But if I could slap them, they'd be in some serious fucking trouble. Yeah. The game changes. I tell you that. Like yeah. I've had two people tell me in CJJ, the hardest they've ever been hit in their life is against me. In CJJ, not yeah. and these are MMA fighters, right? Or at least one MMA fighter. And you think your game really excels in that format, even more so than just straight jiu-jitsu. It's like, it's like I'm not the best mixed martial artist. I'm not just the best pure jiu-jitsu. You know, I have, I'm a, a mixture of violence that my happy spot seems to be CJJ, right? Because right I, don't need, I don't need the brain damage of sta- and, and standing, striking. Like, I still do that because it's fun. But, uh, <clears throat> but, yeah, I mean, just the... Add strikes to my jiu-jitsu. I mean, that's really where I come from. I had 21 MMA fights before I was chasing a jiu-jitsu life. Right. So jiu-jitsu, when I started, was kind of easy. I'm like, well, no one's hitting me. <laughs> and Once now you've I been go back cage. to this, and I, I just know I hit really, really fucking hard. And it changes people's Everything. abilities, and it changes people what they're willing to do. They don't even want to be there anymore. That's amazing. Well, I don't want to be there. I know that. <laughs> but I do want to be here watching Thank you for the next Thank round, you. man. Thank You're you. going to get yeah. the winner of this yeah. JM Congratulations. versus match yeah. here. We'll Righteous, see you. Thank you, guys. We'll see you yeah. back out there. Thank Pleasure. you, brother. Nathan. We're going to go back to the action. Coming up in this second round, we got J.M. Holland taking on David from 10 Planet Lombard, Illinois. What do you think of this matchup, BMAC? Um, you know what, man? We saw J.M. had a tough match in his first round. He got up off the mat. He was definitely fatigued. Yep. He went into that overtime. It was, you know, great work. He had a great match. But I definitely think that he was tired coming out of that first one. Now, you're always tired coming out of a match, right? Even if you're in good shape, you're tired coming out of a match if it goes the distance. So we'll see how he recovered between rounds. Yeah, we definitely had the longer the two matches. David having the submission in regulation against Anthony Burchek in that first match. Showed a really good back take, rear naked choke. David showed great wrestling in that first match as well. Jam trying to play for this overhook, but he allows David to clear that inside space and flatten him out. Jam, a great lockdown player, though. Yeah, and David's trying to hide that by keeping his foot turked. But now... Pimp arm over on the other side. Jam trying to work this butterfly recovery back yeah, he's trying with to get his stomp. That, that stomp in there, right? David doing a good job keeping dominance of the inside space over here on his right. Jam's left, though. Great, great pressure. James going for that high head peel. David with the inside foot position, looking to pass. Excellent recovery there by JM against a good pressure pass. And JM immediately going to the clinch game, climbing up his legs in a rubber guard. And David responded by going into it, stacking. It's like a low stack there. Yeah. He's that not, can be very effective as well. He's not super, he's not head high. Yeah. You know? But you got to be careful that you don't go backwards when you do yeah, that. Because sitting, this is where now yep, James going to start to drag him in. He sat his weight back on his heels, yeah, and yeah. that's what you were referring to, BMAC? Yes. So, you know, you can stack with your hips high, or you can stack with your hips low. As long as you're making forward pressure, that rubber guard's going to be hard to play. The problem when you stack low, what's next? Mm-hmm. You have to come back you're eventually. Come back, yeah. And, and you're gonna, when you do, you have to go through a position where it gives a guy like JM with a dangerous rubber guard just a window of opportunity. And there. as we see, he's going to pump that foot off the hip. JM looking at zombie in arm. He's going to the punch choke, create some action. Now he goes, he wants that zombie. Yeah, I think he's going to try to clear for this crackhead control right here. Come up and cross his feet. He's double bagging right now. Sides the bell on it. David's got good there, pressure. Now, this is a, oh, man, almost a mistake I like, there. Uh, yeah, almost. I like David's pressure, but then he kind of angled into JM and gave him an There's opening. the zombie. JM going to have a lot more options now. Switches yeah. off to the meat hook, and now he wants the inside the space on his left. Good job by David recognizing he's got to get that hand back yeah, inside. Cannot leave it Look up. Overhook. Look how JM uses his elbow on the inside there to try to clear the space for that triangle. Really good frame. David keeping his hands clasped, keeping his elbows flared. Yeah, David's saying discipline, man. That's the main thing you got to do against a, this kind of systematic, slow-paced guard. you got to stay disciplined. They're just trying to bait you into a trap. Right. But time and pressure wears out a good trap, too. Good job by David there.
Pop triangle attempt from JM. Got a little overzealous there, allows David to step over into the half guard. JM fully on his side right here though, so he's not receiving any pressure on this pass yet. He yeah, goes underneath, like, and like now that. here comes the pressure passing. I like that David's hiding his foot. It's trapped in the half guard, not allowing JM. He's bringing it up to the far side, jamming up his hips. I like how JM keeps his, his knees up and his, he's keeping that underhook up. Yeah, straight up. Yeah. Off balance in him. Now he's gonna try to slip out on this octopus guard here. Frame on the hip on the bottom. I like David's, this is a good battle, man. Both this, guys are really playing good technical jujitsu here. We might see a little back take action from yeah, either guy he right here. He tried to step over into that mount, but JM I was baiting him to step David, over to that leg. David's gonna mount right now. Yeah, he got past the knee line, didn't he? He's right at that knee line, and his feet are crossed. He's looking for the Dagestani oh, cufflinks. Oh, just inching his way up the body. He's, he's content to go ahead and go for him. He's, he's trying to get James to build up on that right elbow so he can get the Dagestani cufflinks. There it is, steps over on the mount on the other Great side. Great pressure. Nice heavy mount there. David looking super impressive in the second match. Showing dominance. Cool, calm pressure passing through the guard of J.M. Holland. J.M. exposing the back a little bit. Got to be careful, but David refusing the back. Wants to, wanted to flatten him out there. Felt like he had something cooking from the mount. Yeah, I think he wants to keep him under control. Maybe he knows that J.M. is... Right. Look at those hips, man. He can feel he's making a lot of pressure. Yeah. He can feel the effects. Oh, he's making the press. There's no <coughs> doubt about that one. I like how David is staying patient. Not exposing anything. Jam not exerting a lot of energy either. Yeah, but he's getting exposed on this arm triangle here. Oh. There he goes. Jam up on his side. That's a tight grip squeeze, but it's not in it's, great position. It's not yet. He needs to either flatten him back out. Okay, he's going to turn it into a back take. Nice I was thinking he might sit. slide off into that Derek Rayfield kind of half back yeah, arm in choke. That Derek Rayfield uh, calls it the, uh, the snuggle, snuggle bug. bug. Yeah, snuggle I couldn't remember bug. what he says. Yeah, it gets basically Oh, he's under the chin. Back. That's going to be oh, a wrap. Wow. JM yeah. gives it up. JM gives it up with the arm trapped. He was RNC'd on the bottom side, and he just knew that there was no way he was going to escape Dang, that man. one. Man, David. With, David with two finishes. David with a orchard. couple of upsets, I, I would say. I told you, man, I've seen the kid. He's, he's not bad. Man, with being two black belts, Anthony Burchek and Jay Mullen, both CJJ vets, both mixed martial artists as well. I don't know much, too much about David. We'd lo love to get him over here. Yeah. If we, we need could. to talk to him. See Manny Vasquez in his corner over there. Manny... Great black belt, too. Yeah, man. All right, we're about to see Mike John for the first time. Had some real gangster moves. Awesome. Oh, yeah, you're ready to rock. Dude, tell me about that last match. How are you feeling after that big sub? Oh, it feels good to get a sub against a really tough guy. A known black belt. Uh, I don't know, it just feels good, especially in uh, before uh, overtime. Right, absolutely, in regulation. So you got two subs so far two tonight black in regulation. Belts. Two black belts. And uh, to be honest, I haven't, I haven't seen you competing too much. You're new to me. Tell, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where, where are you from? I'm from 10th Planet Lombard in Illinois. Okay, so you train with Omar and those guys. Yeah, with Omar Ocasio. Beautiful. Got a tough team, got a lot of good guys. And what, they don't know us yet, but we're what, working. You guys are working on it. What rank are you? What belt rank I'm are you? I'm a brown belt. You're a brown belt. Yeah. Okay, how long have you been training? Uh, well, I started with wrestling four years and then did some... Man. MMA five years and now just jiu jitsu for maybe strictly jiu jitsu like two years, two, two okay. or three. So, man, you look, you look really tremendous out there. Great match. Congratulations. We're going to let you guys, we're going to let you go in and recover, and we'll see you out there in a few moments, all right? Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Thanks again, man. Congratulations, brother. Thank you. We're underway here already. Mike John, we're seeing Mike for the first time. He's taking on Jordan Worth. Mike. We've seen him at a lot of qualifiers at several different weights. Yes. He always puts on a good performance. Michael we haven't John, seen him break through yet, though. Well, he has actually finished second in three different 10th Planet qualifiers. So always... Oh, here, here's a nice cross on she step over. Always the uh, bridesmaid, never the bride for Michael yeah. John. But today could be his day because 155 is a weight class that I think he's at his best. He's done 
Weight class is low as 145, where I think he cut too much weight. He's also done 170, where he gives up too much size. So seeing him today here at 155, um, I think that's his best chance of uh, finally taking home the win and, and getting the ticket, punching his ticket to well, the big show. He's got his hands full. Oh, my goodness. Wow, great pass as soon to as the I mount. Say that, Cowboy pass. Great through to the mount, dude. Hips and a heavy flying. Mount. Good head pin right there. And these two guys are no strangers to each other. Jordan Worth and Michael John have competed against each other multiple times. Jordan Worth from 10th Planet Las Vegas on the bottom in the white rash guard. Michael John on top in the black. And, uh, we're, you know, they're essentially teammates on the same Look coach. Look at this Ooh. guard recovery by wow. Jordan. And Jordan's going to use that to turn that into a reap and attack the heel hook position. Michael John Holy recognizes cow. it. Jordan's flexibility is unbelievable, BMAC. The guy can double Lotus with no hands. I mean, Mike's trying to fight it off. Yeah. This that is, is just ooh. insane. Jordan does favor this double outside Ashi position with both legs draped across. Scary position these days in the game, though, man. Absolutely. It, it kind of just, if you don't already have the heel hook, oh, that's ooh, a that's belly a down. Oh, that's a deep belly down foot lock, and Jordan has a deep bite on it. Michael John carefully not to be rolled over, because if he rolls. See, I this is the problem with that outside Ashi. This is exactly it right here. Again, clinched. And Michael John is trying to use his left leg to pull his right leg back, but Jordan's got him stretched so far that he can't do that. And Michael John can't get his left leg involved in the defense. There you go. And there, there he pulls is. his leg back. It's going to smash Yeah, that's, back. that's the beef I got with that outside Me too. I'm now, not if I've good got at the, it. If I've got the break ready to go, it's a great finishing position. But I don't like it as a way to play the game right. to get into the finish. You know? And we see Michael John, interestingly, mount him again right away, right? Right after Jordan used that reap as a mount escape, we're seeing him mount him again. And kind of an interesting strategy. Maybe he's not worried about it, but, man, Jordan's flexibility, you got to you gotta at least respect that. Man, I like the strategy. I think he felt like he had something cooking and he made a mistake on the first one. I see. Staying patient. Yeah, if he can keep keep some underhook action put together, it's going to be hard for Jordan to put that back. But you see, he has dismounted into this knee on belly position here. And Jordan had a pretty quick Punch choke. first match today. Michael John receiving a bye as the second overall seed in the event. So he received a bye in the first round. Jordan only had a two-minute match in his first round. However... He competed last night in Las Vegas at the high rollers. Michael John with a rolling back take, locking up the body triangle, oh. arm under the neck. This Jordan is has for Jordan. two grips in, but trouble. I don't think that's going to be I it right I think that's there. a wrap. Look at that shot. Oh, Ooh, Jordan, Jordan is breathing. He is breathing. Yeah, I mean, I like Mike's squeezing position here. Yeah, I think I mean, he's going to close him out. He's got everything in his advantage. He just needs to be patient. There's no way Jordan can survive. Uh, yeah, I mean, body for six triangle. Minutes. Full squeezing p potential right here. He's trying to. Mike's having trouble putting him away, but I'm gonna tell he's you, got it. It's not going to make it through that. He might have to go to sleep. Yeah, when he gets a tap. Jordan fought that one off as long as humanly possible. He absolutely did not want to give that one up. Great match. Michael John's timing on fire. Represented 10th Planet OC. And we'll get him down with us in the broadcast booth. Again, multiple times. We've seen, we've seen these guys both multiple times, but right now we're going to bring Michael John, 10P Black Belt, under Coach Casey. What's up? What's well, going welcome. on, my brother? Uh, uh, nothing, just got done. <laughs> another uh, day at the office? Yeah, yeah, another day. <laughs> Beautiful. Another weekend, sorry I'm out of breath. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> You know, you're squeezing necks and cash and checks. Oh, I, I didn't know if I should let that go or keep it. I was like, ah, I think I got this. Yeah, I think you made the right call. Absolutely. We, we were, I mean, we had such a, we had a great angle uh -huh. on that choke and his face. He, you know, we saw you give him a good squeeze a couple of times yeah, and, and, then like, he, and then readjust and then squeeze and readjust. But yeah, no, shout out to my corner, Isaac. Uh, good cue, the elbow in the middle. Yeah. Push down and then pack. Uh, always good to corner to ask him. So. As somebody who has experienced that very choke from you yeah. several times, because me and Michael John have trained quite a bit extensively uh. over the years. 
let me just tell you, that looked like your timing was so on point. You went immediately from a kind of back rear position to rolling back take, body triangle, and right under the neck. And it seems like you've probably drilled that about 10,000 times. Uh, the last three weeks, I've been doing a lot of back control in my classes. Two weeks on back attacks, defensive, offensive, hand fighting. Uh, and it's really paying off here. Man, that, was, that looked beautiful. So you had a buy in round one. You got the submission victory in regulation. Yes, and uh, you're going to be looking at the winner of this match. Yes, sir. Coming up pretty soon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm excited for uh, either one of these guys. Thank you, man. Well, we appreciate having you, and uh, we'll see you in the next match. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. Right, thank, appreciate you, guys. Thank you, brother. All right, guys. We're going to go to the second round of this 10 Planet qualifier. We got Ben Eddy taking on Victor Medina from the 10 Planet Freaks. And BMAC, tell me how you think this one's going to go. Give me some Victor prediction. seemed really confident when he was sitting here with us. He did. He did. Uh, you know, he he said his, his strategy was guard passing. Right. And, Interesting. Uh, yeah. He said he had to stay out of the guard with Ben Eddy, but his strategy was guard passing. He said, I think I'll be fine. I don't think I'm going to have any trouble. Yeah, it sounded, he sounded very confident when he sat with us. And, you know, these guys, I imagine, have trained quite a bit together, being in San Diego, Ben Eddy splitting his time between there and Templin and Austin. So I, I'm sure these guys are very familiar with each other. Ben coming into some low passing right away. Seen a lot of passing from Ben today, and I like it. Yeah, showing off that he's got more than just uh, the Hindu Latin in his bag. Absolutely. He's more than just rubber guard, guys. He's got, you know, these, everyone has got their specialties, but ultimately you, you cannot get to the highest levels of this game without being incredibly well-rounded in every aspect. Good leg palm will work here from Victor. Not really giving Ben the grips that he wants or needs to develop a strong passing. Ben wants to close the distance and put some weight on him, but Victor... Just doing a nice job, keeping Ben just outside of his game. Yeah, he's keeping him in that range that he can't quite get past. He's gonna, using a good knee shield, the top leg, and long frames. Both guys are pretty lanky in, in, in height and stature, so it's kind of almost a mirrored. Nice knee pommel there. Good elevation counter and a oh, sweep. Oh, look, he may drag him in right here, though. This, this might is be it. What Ben wanted, because there's this that exactly overhook, it. that head control, and here comes a rubber guard. And you see how he stole the grips that he wanted Free during? New York. Oh, my oh God. He's going to get boy. it. Listen, dude, I was, uh, I've been here a couple of times training with Ben. It's the most efficient jujitsu finish that I'm aware of. It seems crazy. How can that be efficient? It seems crazy. How can that be efficient? But he doesn't spend any energy. He can stay here all day. And his hands are locking, and it's coming in. That's it. It's a wrap. And He's going to you know, finish it. I think with that foot hooking the far leg prevents Medina from jumping to his right, and there's the tap for that Hindu routine. And check Hindu routine number one off of the board. Prediction by Ben Eddy. He, he called, called two. two. He's still got plenty of chances. He's got what? What? Two more chances. Two more chances. And we see the first Hindu routine. And if you're Ben Eddy, you know, you had that barn burner of a match with Kevin Ma in the first round where he got submitted in OT and then came back and twistered <laughs> Kevin Ma. In, in a, it was a, bru a brutal. brutal overtime. Kevin didn't want to give that one up either. Shout out to him. He showed his stock today. And uh, now in the second round, you know, Ben came out against Victor, played his game, showed us what we all wanted to see, which is the high level rubber guard action with the Hindu team. Great yeah, victory. That's Getting what I was saying love. about Ben earlier, man. Like, he sets that Hindu team up everywhere he goes because right. he knows it's just such an efficient position. For him. We're going to get him on right now. I'm you got to ask him. Excited about to hear about oh, yeah. it. All right, Ben. What's All up, right. my brother? Can you hear us? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. One Hindu team down. You told me we were going to get two. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the first guy, I, couldn't, I wasn't going to find that. But uh, he, he followed on top, didn't separate, so he fell right into it. That was excellent. So you got to feel good in the second round with a short match, making pretty quick work there as you go into the semis. Yeah, that's nice. I didn't want to have to use a ton of energy there. I'm going to have a hard match against Mike John. He's a... Uh, Tight, small guy, finds good spaces. He's good at legs. Um, have to follow him really well, stay tight. So, yeah, I gotta keep going. 
couple hard matches next year are really hard, so it's good to get through this one without killing the breath. Yeah, good good for the tournament day at yeah. least. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, who'd you travel here with today, Ben? Did you come with uh, your cornerman from Texas yeah, from, or San Diego? From Austin. Austin. Yeah, okay. Gabe, Curtis. Nice. We got a Airbnb between the Texas guys. So Awesome. All the Texas people. Came so. out here to show out, my man. Yeah. Well, so far, so good. You're looking great, man. I was telling everybody on the broadcast, I've felt that Hindulatine several times. It looks so crazy. If you've got any kind of experience, you're like, that can't be efficient. But I was telling them, I feel like that's one of the most efficient moves. It feels like you could stay there forever. Well, did you see how I looked over at uh, yeah. Victor and Eddie? <laughs> yeah, we did once, see that. Once I get that far in, it's already done. I can feel it's done. So, yeah, it's that much control, you know? Yeah, that's it's what amazing. I like about it. I like to chill a lot when I roll, you know, so I find those slow spots. And it's a real slow, it's a good control spot. And you used your passing to set up your guard. Yeah, which I, is wild, you know. It's I just, fall into it from when they try and sweep. I fall into it. That's I'm still trying to get away from that because if he separated really well, he could be on top with good separation. Right. He just didn't separate, so he came into the trap. He came on top, you yeah. know, into that trap. Well, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing if you can pull it off again against Mike. <laughs> I love watching you. You yeah, put Mike's, out two exciting finishes tough. already, yeah. man. Thanks. Yeah, that was truly Thanks. tremendous. Thanks, Thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see yeah. you out there in the next match, Ben. Yeah, it was fun. It was cool. I like, I like this. I like the bringing us onto the mic like this. And yeah, it's it's been fun for we us. We want to showcase you guys. Cool. Yeah, yeah. We, I, I haven't got to experience that as a competitor yet. Going and then being on the mic like this with the camera there and uh, talking right after your match is kind of cool. I like it. It's, <laughs> it's fun. awesome. You're killing it, dude. Yeah. We appreciate All right, the experience, brother. We're going to this next brother. match right here. Thanks a lot, man. And we we're got getting our... started, man. Orchard and David are going at it. No time to be wasted. Nathan Orchard, consummate veteran, taking on David Garcia from 10th Planet Lombard. And David has really impressed me today, getting two finishes over two 10P black belts. Two, two of the more well-respected 10P yeah, black belts. Two too. of the guys who have competed you know, on just the highest level cards, really, to be honest. Oh, and, and nice he hits arm Orchard drag. with the arm drag. Ooh, Dude, Body lock. David. Got to be David's careful here, though. something else, man. David's getting really... Body triangle from Orchard on the bottom. He likes that body triangle on the bottom. He uses it to squeeze the life out of his opponent. Yeah, and he's putting a lot of pressure on that thing. David don't like that. No, you can tell that's a tight squeeze. And David, you know, he's got a he's got a pretty thin waist, so you got to imagine that Nathan's squeeze on that is is cobra like. And it's not taxing him so much because he's not that big. He's got it locked out on the shin exactly. instead of like trying to find the right spot. He doesn't need too great of an angle for it. He can be square and still lock it up. Thing is, just hard to advance a position with that body triangle in. So Nathan does let it go. Now finds himself on. The underhook here. He's got over under. Yeah, he's got that head control. Back to the body triangle, foot on the hip. All right, and here comes the beginning of this dead orchard. Rubber setup. guard. I can't, he does not have New York. He needs to zombie that arm. So for our folks at home. That's the great are, thing about that dead orchard position, though, man. You can do it without the arm zombie through. Right. In fact, absolutely. it's easier. It's, be, it's if, better if set. That's what, if that's your game, it's yep. easier. I'm terrible at the dead orchard, so. I've been playing with it a lot more. I've really made a, an attempt recently to get my oh, this is trouble. Rubber guard. David's, game David's in trouble right here. And he's in trouble right you here. You want to improve your rubber guard? This is a guy to watch. Nathan Orchard going to work. Okay, Good he gets that butterfly hook stuffed in. Orchard shakes that off instantly. If you're David, what do you do here, BMAC? Man, go backwards is the worst possible thing he could do right here. You gotta he's he's got to stack into You got to stay committed forward? I think so, man. You got to make it so uncomfortable for Nathan to stay there that he starts to feel like it's not worth it and moves on. I see. But trying to, and that's know, what, if that's he's what already got into that crackhead control, man, and he starts to pull backwards, that's when your elbows start to narrow and they get pushed across the chest. That's, that's when you're in big trouble. Yeah, well, it's over at that point with a guy like this. And I'll check the setup here from Nathan. David trying to trap that hand under the bottom. We saw him doing that with Burchak earlier. Nathan not, he's not having that. it, though. Oh, he traded, no, he, oh he traded to the other side he's with it, He's got that same Mario pass with that wrist pin. Old school. Got to be careful, though. You can clear the head. See, if Nathan can clear the head with, like, a flying, flying kung, kung fu, fu right yeah. here, mm -hmm. David's hands are committed to the bottom. David's got to try to get that right leg over that foot. 
He knows he doesn't have the angle for it yet, but that is the direction he wants to go. Nathan kind of gives it the pressure. He's trying to separate, but man, David's got an insane grip to hold down Anthony Burchek and David and Nathan Orchard with that wrist pin. It's pretty impressive. Nathan looking to set up a hip bump there, pulls back into his rubber guard. I think he's got free New York. And you'll notice the guys who are really good at the dead orchard, they, oh man, David's gotta be careful right here. They lean towards, they, they go to the hip that the rubber guard side is on. Whereas the guy, like when you watch Eddie play, he doesn't play the dead orchard as much. Mm -hmm. You'll see he favors the other hip on the ground. Right. From so the that his Look at this, clear the head here by Nathan. Now into the chill dog position, double bag, switches off to the invisible collar, Ooh. now the zombie. Full invisible collar here. That was, I mean, that was an Eddie Bravo textbook. seminar right there. That was there. textbook. Textbook Eddie Bravo. And he's watching on front row at the action, along with Vic Davila. Shout Nathan out to simulating the strikes again. Oh, yeah. that, David has to be very careful right there. You see, he started to get narrow, tried to pull that arm out. Nathan using that elbow pressure into the jaw to create reaction. Oh. And wow, man, David is hanging tough. You know, dude. you survive and you escape, and then you're right back into the same play again. Nathan is, he's relentless, man. And I think you know, if you're going against a guy or you're going into a bracket rather with the quality of rubber guard players that we see today, I mean. You you gotta, you gotta really spend time in this position, and that means getting submitted, man. You know, in the gym, if you're not spending head. time here. Chill dog now for Nathan. You'll Double bag. He's gonna look to get back to this invisible collar. I think he feels like he got something going there earlier. He's using that elbow wedge into Ooh, the face. He's got a good angle. You see, now as he starts to get towards his other hip, he starts to open up the more almost Plata style plays. Really good leg He's gonna clear staple. the head here. But we might see a go go. Oh, dude, we've seen a go go. Go go, go go plot attempt. Go go plot attempt. That's Got a tap. It. Wow. Incredible go go plot attempt and finish by Nathan Orchard with the incredibly dangerous rubber guard. Wow, dude. He had that bottom leg stuck between David's leg, but he cleared the head for the go-go, had double hands locked behind the head and comes away with the win. And now he's coming to us to talk about that victory. Nathan Orchard. You guys, you guys keep catching me out of breath here. Yeah, good. Well, you I'm know. I'm trying to get you over here fresh. <laughs> I wouldn't expect a go-go plotted to come without being a little out of breath, but yeah. that was Tough just, that was impressive, man. That was insane. Okay. Great match. You know what? That move right there. I was once on a eight fight win streak in MMA. I tried something, a shitty Goku plot. I lost it. Lost my eight fight winning streak. Gone. I went to back to the workshop. I polished the shit out of that. See, it wasn't a go-go clinch. Right. It's a little different, a little tiny different. Well, years and years later, I'm in Kuwait, and I go up against this 300-pound Brazilian jiu-jitsu Brazilian dude. Black belt, and I go go plot of him like that. So I lost years ago from it. I learned from it. One here, that was the second time. Wow. Did that shit save my ass at an MMA fight? When I lost that, this is what I got from it. You so know the what progression I mean? over that time, it's like, really. It's like saying, it's like, it's, it's okay. It's like saying, uh, it wasn't that bad that I lost that MMA fight because it helped me win tonight, you know? Yes. So it's all good. You learned from it I'm years later. Go. Yeah, I'm going to breathe. Tremendous, Thank man. Thank you, guys. Congratulations. We'll see you in the finals. We'll see you in the final, Nate. Man, awesome performance by Nathan Orchard. Gogo Plata, Hindu Lutines, Twisters. We've seen it all tonight, BMAC. And we're going to find out right here who's going to meet in the final. We've got Ben Eddy versus Mike John. Mike had the bye in the first round, so he's... Probably quite a bit fresher, but Ben's second match was quick. It was, but he did have that grueling match with Kevin Ma in the first round where it went to double OT, uh, so rather second round of OT, with Ben winning by twister. Yeah, he pulled it out at the last second, literally the last second with a twister. Ben, you can see the way that Ben reaches up with his left hand to collar tie there, he's baiting 
Mike to try to take the underhook on that side so he could just drag him into this Hindulatin game. Yeah, he definitely wants to play his game, I think. And, you know, he knows Michael John as a competitor. These guys are no strangers to each other. Mike doing a good job so far not taking the bait, but Ben just constantly offering that underhook over there on his left side. Yeah, he's definitely You can baiting. even see it just in the way he approaches. He leans over that way and opens that elbow. Right. He wants you to take he that underhook. He wants you to punch that underhook hard so he can get your head and an overhook and pull you in. And here's that overhook. And nice duck to the back from Michael John. That was a great oh, move. Man. Really tight. And this is Michael John's number one position, in my opinion, is when he gets to the back. Ben, ben evades it, though. Foot fought his way out. And now Mike's going to have to come down and pass his guard. And I would expect to see some real patience from Michael John here. I think he knows exactly what he's up against. And, again, if you guys have watched him planet qualifiers before, you're no stranger to him. He's finished second in three separate qualifiers. And uh, I think he's just going to be real content in this round to make his moves when they're open and otherwise be not lulled into Ben's guard, Ben's game. We're here in the semifinals. Yes. Shout out to those following us in the group chat on live on YouTube. We appreciate you guys. Shout out to Renee Sosa I saw in there. Tempe Soldier. Bias Hacker. He's always on my live streams. I think Rafa Sparza is probably watching. I wouldn't know because he's not that important. <laughs> <laughs> I love Rob. <laughs> Semi-final matchup here. Winner takes on Nathan Orchard in the finals. Again, Michael John was the number two seed in this tournament. Had a bye in the first round as a result, and so did Nathan. So we may see two guys who only had two matches in. Finals. There's Boy, a takedown big call. double leg, but into the into the into position the that Ben guard, is looking for. I like how Michael John did not stop until the ref touches him. That was the right move because now he is not on the ground clinched with him. He's on his feet, and he's going to be able to possibly separate. But he should not hang out here for long. I yeah, like this that. could be this could be a lot of work for Ben. That right popped, here. popcorn shake is the right move there, but he doesn't want to go down oh, to the ground. Man. Mike John immediately Trying pops to back up. stand and get out of there. Anything to not get pulled into that game. Yeah, great absolutely. reactions. Good high-level black belt yep. reactions to what Ben was trying to funnel him into. Just high awareness. Just black belt level awareness of what you're doing and what your goal is. and Not just taking reckless chances. It's very clear, to me at least, and those probably watching at home, that Michael John knows the danger well, you have to at this point with Ben. Absolutely. <clears throat> it's not like we've just seen him do that him do like one time. <laughs> no. You know, I mean, every time you see him, he's he's hitting it once, sometimes multiple times in a tournament. As he predicted for tonight, <clears throat> will we see that Hindu team in this match against Michael John? He's definitely looking to clinch. Rolling yeah, guillotine attempt. I like that attempt. choice for Mike. Just how can I get to a scoring position or a attacking position without having to navigate this closed guard system, this overhook right. guard system that Ben has. And Michael John, in my experience, we trained quite extensively in Orange County together for quite a few years. And uh, he's got a great guillotine and a great Yeah, he's rear a great naked. front headlock his, his front headlock is incredible. And his guillotine and his rear naked choke are his two best submissions. No stranger to the leg game, but I think He's really just coming to his own as a competitor this last year, competing almost every weekend. And I think that's what it takes to be sharp at the highest levels. You must you, compete you often. You have to, man. Competing's a separate skill set. That's what I tell my guys all it the is. time. It is. It's um, not always uh, what you show, you know, in the gym in terms of who's technical and who's great at this and that. It's competing is its own different animal. Yeah. In competition, you're using your jujitsu to win the competition. Correct. It's not the same thing as do you have good jujitsu. Right. Both of these guys, however, do have tremendous jiu-jitsu yeah. in all aspects, and everyone here knows it. That's why the tension is thick in this room. Yeah. Nice. Look at that. Beautiful work. Great double unders. Almost put Ben into to the wall a little there. Co Soto with the yeah, with the wall action, exactly. That would have been a concussion. It'd be almost Uranage, but 
Michael John, no, just really well-rounded. He's got good wrestling, good leg locks, good passing, good guard, guillotine, rear naked choke being his specialties. And uh, I think he just knows that he's going to be able to cook the clock on the feet at certain points before the get down rule comes well you to gotta effect. feel like he has he feels like he has the advantage in overtime too yeah being the fresher guy well the um, fresher guy and i just think he's got the better overtime positions okay um that's not been that's not been strong point and i think he would tell you that okay so he's looking to finish this thing in regulation for sure Whereas Mike, I think, has multiple ways he can win this match. And, you know, I think Ben Oh, and there's a clinch. Oh, man. I think Michael John's trying to put pressure. He's got a really good pace when he wants to turn it up. But I don't know if that's the right move against Ben. I like what he's been doing, taking this match slow and really picking his spots and not being reckless. And, again, I've trained with him quite a bit. He, he has a tendency to get a little bored with matches and sometimes for some action. So it's going to be that battle. He's getting good corner instruction from Isaac Cordova in his corner. <clears throat> About three minutes left in this one. That's the problem, though, man. You got At some point, you got to get down there and try to pass the guy's guard. Yeah, you're just not going to be able to do it completely postured up on your feet with somebody who's got a guard like Ben Eddy or any, any real black belt, but they're going to have to engage. And Michael John knows that, and Ben Eddy knows that. And you see Ben Eddy constantly going back to the collar tie, and that's he's living on that collar tie and hoping to get a post and then an overhook. Ben giving Mike the look like, hey, are we going to do this? can see it it's casual glances to each other like <laughs> are we gonna go or are we gonna wait to the last minute here <clears throat> you know when these black belts go bmac it's like everyone is on the edge of their seat yeah you could definitely feel that tension in the room right now packed house here at hq downtown los angeles of course beautiful day extra warm and toasty inside the building for us i think there's some sort of fog machine Permanently installed in <laughs> HQ as well. A legal fog machine for those of you at home watching abroad. Or little leg pummels from Michael John, and you know we're just seeing we're just seeing patience. I think it might. I think it's pretty clear now. I think Michael John's looking for overtime, and I think he's he feels he has the advantage there. They do train a lot of or a lot of overtime in Orange. I know this to be true, and uh, like you said, BMAC, I'm not sure if uh, that's the uh, number one game for Ben. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I think Ben would readily admit that's not what he wants to happen in the match. And Michael John, you know, being his best position, in my opinion at least, is, is the back control going yeah. to overtime. I think it's, it is going to be his advantage. Oh, it looks like... Uh, we're going to keep this one going. And after this match, we will have a special match, an absolute weight, open weight match. Oh, man, they just called Matt Paul off the sideline. That oh, big cake, man. Oh, boy. That is my boy, <laughs> Matt Paul. He stayed with me for a short time in Las Vegas a couple years oh, ago. a sock lock attempt to change levels for Mike. Tempe Black Belt from Chicago and uh, Denver now. So it looks like he's going to be getting down with who? I'm not sure. As we round down this regulation round. Michael John, 10 Planet Orange taking on Ben Eddy, 10 Planet Austin. We're about 30 seconds remaining in this regulation period. That is the end of regulation. And I believe that MJ will get the nod. Actually, he'll get the call because there's no clear dominant person in that match. So we got 10 Planet, I'm sorry, EBI overtime. Coming up here, Michael John elects the back position. Potential of three OT rounds. 
Two minutes each maximum per round. Michael John starting it off at the top of the first OT. Back control, body triangle. Nice switch there. Getting his body triangle back to the high side. Got the foot in the middle, but I, I feel like there's a lot of offense that can be presented that way. And now he switches off to this crushing style body triangle here. That anaconda squeeze. 20 seconds into his first ride. And Michael John definitely has that anaconda squeeze. I assure you guys. He's got... He's a shorter guy for the weight class. He's extremely muscled and strong. And uh, I think he knows that his, his, his victory really, you know, to beat a high level guy, you just gotta be on point. And, uh, and he's really on point. He's got the good hand control, not wrist control, hand control. The fat part, the thick part of the hand. Ben Eddie doing a great job fighting it out. Yeah, well, Ben's doing a great job surviving. He hasn't really been able to create an angle that's going to oh, lead towards man. escape for him. And now he's 70 seconds in to this defensive round for him. And, you know, I think it's just it's, sometimes it's just stylistic, right? Yeah, I do people agree match with that, up. Yeah. And I think Michael John's style really shut down Ben's game in this match. And now we're in overtime where, you know, MJ's got this position that he excels in. And uh, Ben's having a hard time getting the escape. We might max out at the right time of two minutes. Well, Mike's going to go across the face there. I like those ben face rips. Ben barely gets those hands back inside. He's done that a couple of times. Ben so ear muffin. He, yeah, I was going to say he, he reaches up for his ear. Oh, cross, oh, cross grip bad. trap. There's a trapped arm. And we're going to go smother to RNC. Michael John. Ben Man, regains the use survives. of the arms. We're that about was a, to hit the max ride here. That was a great uh, straight jacket grip to the arm trap, but unable to finish. He maxes out ride time at the top of the first OT for Michael John. Hey, we saw that Ben's a finisher, though, and that he can is. get the quick finish if he can get into Man, that spot. If you guys are watching right now and you missed the first round, Ben Eddy hit a beautiful twister in OT against Kevin Ma, and now... You see the body triangle, the leg in between the two of Michael Johns. Michael John hand fighting. He knows what he's got to do. Oh, I like Mike's play right there. Starting to create a little angle for himself. Good recovery by Ben. Very good work by Ben there. I like what Mike had put together for just a second there. He made Ben drop that bottom hook. Ben, ben seems a little loose with his control here. Yeah, he's keeping his back flat, his head on the ground, as opposed to being rounded around Michael John. But maybe he just feels confident in that body triangle, because that body triangle does look pretty tight. Ooh. MJ knows that he was he maxed out, so he knows he's got time. If he just escapes at all, he's going to be up on ride time going into the second OT. Okay, here goes Ben now, switching off to this single hook. Maybe thinking about this twister again. Oh, try, he's going to try to save it with this chair. Seat. Oh, man. Great recovery. Barely gets back to that body triangle. He needed that, too. Closing in on a minute and a half. Coming up, control ride time for Ben Eddy. Bottom of the first OT. Against Michael John, who is defending. The black rash guard, black shorts. We might be seeing two max. Oh, there's the angle. Ride times. Michael John using the angle. He's going to be out of there. Yes, he is. What's that unofficial time, D-Mac? Uh, that was about a minute 43 of ride time there. Michael John leading off the top of the second OT. Ahead in ride time, maxing out the first round. Ben really showed no signs that he was going to be able to escape the position in the first round. Mike pretty well kept the angle and the control through the entire two minutes. And it's, it looks like it's already headed that way again here. Yeah, I think. Oh, Ben Ben got his head to the ground a little bit. He did. Michael John's trying to save it using that top hook. Oh, against he's going to be out of there. Head and arm. 
Head is to the mat. He must clear the elbow in front of Michael John's face. Oh, he's showing the back again. And he does. He's out of it. Very good escape by Ben Eddy. Much better this round. Only a 35-second ride there, so that puts him at about 155 total seconds of ride time after two rounds. Ben has 103 seconds after the first round, so... He's got to make up some time still. He does. Michael John doing a good job of preventing the locking of that body triangle. If you take a look at his foot position, he lost it there. But he did a great job at the initial part. He's getting his shoulders to the mat. Ben Eddie pummels, right arm under the chin. Ben does a good job when he loses that head positioning and the guy gets his head to the mat. He does a good job of bailing on the seatbelt and reaching under with that inside hand to drag him back into position. He's done that a couple of times with Mike here. 30 seconds of ride time now. Michael John doing a good job using his feet again. Ben Eddy recovers that body triangle. Man, Ben almost getting the hand fight that he wants a couple of times. MJ initiating the rolls. Might be able to hula hoop him off. Ben fighting for that twister. You know what though? Wow. Ben, ben just took the lead by about two seconds of ride time there. Interesting. So, uh, in, it's by my calculations, tight. there's about a three second difference with in, Ben in front right now. In favor of Ben. Correct. And so Michael John leading off the top of the third OT, the final level of OT. Final inning of overtime. Michael John leading it off here down approximately three seconds. It's gonna come down to this. Who's gonna see Nathan Orchard in the final? So if you're both these guys, you gotta probably be thinking. You gotta be going for it. You gotta be going. Yeah. Like it's so close. We would love to see a finish for Ooh, this nice. match. I like that pressure on the forehead. So evenly contested. Michael John controlling the fat part of the hand, not the wrist. End ben. of the lever. Man, Ben tried to belly out right there. He just didn't feel like he could go safely without getting see flattened. Michael John setting up the straight jacket control, the cross grips from the rear. Ben Eddy doing a terrific job of defending. Michael John again controlling the hand. Oh, Peeling man. that arm away from the body to expose the neck. Ben just constantly almost able to do what he wants to create the escape, but Mike's control just really good. Forces Ben to show the back, expose it even more. Ben wants to, there's the pommel. Mm, good switch by Mike John. Mike John. Oh, he's under the chin. Wow. Oh, and he's going this to roll. bad. It's very tight. Michael John oh, switching, switching. Ben survives wow. again. Time is running up. Michael John with a ride time of exceeding one minute 30 seconds coming up on. There that goes. Heavy pressure on that body triangle, man. And we may see a max out of ride time in this inning for Michael John, but he's unrelenting in this hand fight game trying to finish. That body triangle just looks brutal, especially when it goes up on the ribs like that from that side position and we got less than 10 seconds remaining in this inning of ot top of the third michael john is going to max out this ride time at two minutes <laughs> retaking the lead considerably so by your estimation b mac ben eddie needs two ways for ben to win okay okay us with it he can ride the max ride time or you can get the submission but if he if his ride if there's any kind of escape before the at all before the like minute and fifty seven second mark Mike John's the winner. Wow. So, so if you're Michael John, clearly it's all about the escape. Got to escape. You must escape. Got to escape, and you got to start escaping fast. Yeah. I mean, you do have a lot of time to work, but you certainly would like yeah, to. Yeah, but you can't wait you can't for wait. the right moment. Maybe the right moment never comes, especially if Ben's content to hold, you know. And if you max out that ride time, losing by just a couple of seconds, the difference being the second inning for both competitors, Michael John holding the ride time approximately 35 seconds in that round with Ben at about approximately 55 seconds. So Mike John did a good job in the good third. Good ride by Ben there. Two underhooks. Double unders right yeah. there, yeah. Allowed him to keep the angle and the connection with the chest that he wanted. 
MJ using 40 the seconds foot now. to open the body triangle. Great defense, and he's oh, going to roll. Gonna he's going to get back to the mat. That's out. He's out of there. That's out. And that is a victory. I think it's going to give it to Mike John. For Michael John. That was about 50 seconds there. Undoubtedly, he's going to walk away with the win via ride time. Congratulations to him. He's going to the finals against Nathan Orchard. Interesting because both of these guys, the one and two seeds, Nathan being one, Michael John being two, and getting the buys in the first round, and now they're in the finals. So come, some could say it was meant to be, one and two seed. Well, you know what? It's, that is the way it's meant to be. Right? The one and the two seed are supposed to meet in the finals every time. You know, That's why you put those guys there, because you want to see the best guy in the final. So if we look at it, I mean, both guys have had two matches. Nathan getting a... Uh, Got it done against Manning Leverett. Right. Got a really good match against him. And then we had Michael John with the bye. And then he defeated Jordan Worth via rear naked choke in his first match. And now wins via ride time. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry, you guys. Michael John, what's up, my brother? Can, can How are you? This? Absolutely. Yeah, take it, That's man. all you, my oh, man. Yeah. How are you feeling after that victory, man? That was a grueling match. Honestly, yeah. I'm sorry. It's super boring. Um, I was just trying to stay out of full guard and half guard with him because I know that's his best spots. Yeah. Nice. So I was trying to be super smart about it. I was getting kind of frustrated halfway through, and I wanted to rush it, but it was like I've had too many past experiences where I do that, and I get caught with stupid shit. I see. So I was trying to be, like, calculated and, like, more precise. Well, it paid off. You know, that experience, those previous experiences yeah. here, you know, he was saying earlier, always the bridesmaid, but yeah. never the bride. Yeah. You're going to get a chance to do it again right here. Against, uh, what do you think about Orchard, man? Oh do you like your chances here? What I, are you trying to, what's the game plan? Um, I know he'll wrestle with me a little bit. I know I've seen him do a bunch of foot sweeps and stuff. I'm curious if he'll actually shoot on me like a single or double just to see what happens kind of thing. He's going to throw uh, that arm drag. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I've noted that. He did, he did a beautiful one a couple times, hoping to maybe counter on that too. Okay, nice. word. Yeah. Oh, man, it was it was really impressive to watch you out there today. You know, like we were just saying, it's it's you guys were the number one in the two seeds. You guys got the buys, and it just seems like it was meant to be for you guys to meet in the finals today. I, I agree 100. percent I was looking the whole time, but I don't I don't like to get too ahead of myself. You know, I like to take it match by match, just because everyone's really fucking good here. And if you lose focus, it's your dreams are over real quick. Absolutely. But uh, I'm super excited. I've looked up uh, for quite, Nathan Orchard for quite a while, so uh, this is awesome. Great opportunity. Uh, Congratulations, just, Mike. Well, you certainly really earned it. looking forward to watching you in the finals, And man. we appreciate Thank watching, you. man. Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys. Good luck to you. We'll see you soon. Yes, sir. Those of you watching at home, we appreciate it. There will be a super fight impromptu. We're live here at 10th Planet headquarters, downtown Los Angeles, on a beautiful Sunday afternoon for the 10th Planet qualifiers for CJJ, the 155-pound lightweights. And if you're just joining us, we are headed to the finals with Nathan Orchard taking on Michael John. Nathan Orchard from 10 Planet Seattle, Michael John from 10 Planet Orange. But before we do that, we're going to have a special match to give those guys some time to recover before the finals. And it is Matt Paul from 10P Chicago versus Amir Alon from 10P Salt Lake City. Both these guys, 10th Planet Black Belts. High-level competitors. I've seen Matt Paul compete quite a bit. Myself personally, spent some time with him. He came and trained with me in Las Vegas under Coach Casey. Shout out to my home squad. Amir Alam, HQ guy originally, moved out to Salt Lake City to open his gym. Also known as the seismologist. He is an actual seismologist, very educated guy, really good dude. He was on 10P's uh, quintet team the official quintet, high level competitor, good black belt, and both these guys jumping in the impromptu match. You know, we needed a, we needed a moment for the uh, Nathan Orchard and Michael John to rest before the finals, and these guys are gonna provide that. A couple of heavyweights, good action. Sit down, Jordan. Sit down. Put this on. This one. That one. That chair right there. Seeing some good back and forth action. Amir on top. We got Jordan Worth sitting down for BMAC. Say hello to the people, Jordan. What's going on, everybody? Awesome. How was your, uh, how was your matches, man? That was, that was pretty impressive. Somebody you, you respect, 
like. He's a part of the same team. Is always better than losing to like somebody you don't like. You know, at least in my opinion. Absolutely. You know, it's all you know. It's 10 p on 10 p crime this weekend, but you know, we all love each other and respect each other, and you know, we're all just pushing each other to the next level, right? Yeah, exactly, man. 10th Planet, we're always, you know what I mean? We're always battling out with, with each other, always always fighting each other to get to the top spot, you know, because there's so many of us. We're trying to figure out who's the best, and we have no problem no problem figuring that out. <laughs> man, it was it was really impressive to see you. So did you drive out here this morning? Um, yeah, my buddy, my manager, Pocholo, drove me out here. Um, I have a new manager now. His name is Pocholo. And we drove out here last night. I competed last night, literally just a couple hours ago, at the High Rollers Celebrity Open. So you had a couple matches there. Yeah. And then I you jumped in today. Man, yep. that's, dude, that's incredible. I submitted two black belts last night in regulation. And then I got to the finals, and I lost to Brady Wickland, unfortunately. Okay, I'm familiar with Brady. And a nice Kimura set up here from oh, wow. Amir on it's top. a big boy to be kimura you. That oh, is. These no. are two big, strong dudes. And he Going turns it into an arm bar. bar. Beautiful. Going for the triangle. Ooh. Oh, he's gonna, is he going to come on top or I is he going to pull him on top position. of him? He's going for the Ooh, Elvis Presley. He oh, he got it. Wow. Beautiful. Great finish from Amir with the arm lock attempt. Set that up with the Kimura. I know we were talking a little bit about what you were up to, but man, what a great setup by Amir. Here's a top side control. Let Matt Paul turn into him, catch the Kimura. That was a beautiful it setup. Back across the hip line and then turns it into the arm bar, threads the foot for the attempt of the triangle, ends up figure four in the legs, throwing the foot back over, arm lock. Yes, that shin across the neck arm oh, lock yeah. is real nasty, man. Pretty dang good myself, man. I'm, I'm a big fan of it. And, you know, it was, it was again, Jordan, really impressive to see you out there, dude. You had a great match against Chris Vickers. You played your game. And, uh, you know, you, you showed it out there against MJ, who you know very well. And we're going to bring in Amir Alam. Go ahead and awesome, have a seat awesome. here, Amir. Oh, I'm going to stay here? Yeah, awesome. you can stay in on this one, Jordan. Cool, you, can, cool. you can sub for <laughs> Mac. Go ahead and put that on there, brother. What's up, Amir? Can you hear us? Yeah, I got you loud and clear. Awesome, man. What a great match that was, dude. We were, we were excited talking. And then the next thing you know, I see you, dude, slapping <laughs> a Kimura from side control, it's throwing quick. it back across him, turning it into an armbar. Dude, that was literally... Week one, day one of jiu-jitsu for me under Eddie Bravo. It was Carney to the baby arm to the Kimura. That baby arm. That's literally day one. Oh, like, gee. A lot, oh, of gee. People, a lot of people talk about shrimp being fundamental, whatever. That's my fundamentals. Right there you there. go, right there. Being Beautiful. offensive. So, yeah, big big props to Matt Paul for stepping up. Yeah, that was a great in. impromptu match. You know, we needed, a, we needed a time for those guys to recover, and you guys were down for the get-down. Yeah, man, always, always ready. You know, that's the beauty of jiu-jitsu. You can just spar 100% every day. You can be ready and do the same jiu-jitsu competition that you do actually out there, um, you know, so. You know, I was telling people at home that, you know, we've seen you on the quintet team for 10 Planet before. That's why I became familiar with you. And I haven't seen you compete too much lately. What have you been doing and just building your school in um, Utah? I probably shouldn't talk about this uh, <laughs> where other people can hear me, but um, COVID fucked me up. Okay. I had long COVID, six months. Oh, man. From October 2020. I've never really been the same. You can see that was a short oh, match. Man. I'm sitting here dying, trying to recover my breath. Okay. So if I if I can ever recover, I'll, I'll get right back on there. Well, dude, incredible. You would never know it. I mean, the pace that you guys had out there for two heavyweights was pretty impressive. Well, that was my last gasp. If I had gotten <laughs> that, it would be over. So. Well, I just want to say congratulations, dude. That was a great match, and we're happy to have you back. I'm stoked to see you competing again, and uh, we hope to see you soon. Thanks, guys. And I just want to shout out to my students back at SLC. This shit works. I'm not teaching y'all bullshit out here. You better, you better put your faith guys, in. Put the numbers in, guys. If you're doubting him, One love. you're doing it wrong. Thank you so Thank much you for guys. joining us, man. We appreciate Great it. Great job. Great job. We're waiting to jump into the action of Michael John, and I just want to thank Jordan for sitting in with us. You're the man. Awesome. Thank you, brother. I appreciate, appreciate you having that. me. And we're going to square up now with Michael John taking on Nathan Orchard in the finals. And, guys, it's getting electric in here right now these two highly highly respected black belts michael john 10th planet orange nathan orchard 10th planet seattle both of them qualifier veterans nathan a actual tournament vet and joining me back is brandon mccaffron on the commentary side Really tough and 
strategically He absolutely is. He looks determined. And this is kind of what he said when we brought him in was, uh, you know, he was, he was expecting Nathan to wrestle with him. Yeah, and being the shorter guy, that's going to be an advantage for him. It's going to be harder for Nathan to get under him. But I expect to see Nathan use a lot of uh, Sasse and Dayashi setups. Nice roll through on the head. MJ doing perhaps the right move and rolling to his back and getting out of there. Best way to defend that front hand, just lay on your back and let him have a position. You know, we have lesser of two evils. Lesser of two evils, exactly. MJ keeping a heavy guard. Stiff arm attempt, Nathan transitions to the legs. Good back and forth action, Michael John electing to stand. Guys watching at home, we appreciate it. Thank you for the feedback in the chat. We're trying to get our mic synced up with the action so we don't spoil the roll for you guys as Nathan Orchard rolls through, but Michael John counters with a shuck by to the back. Now he's in the mount. position here he wants to Nathan likes to get both of his arms on the inside try to bump you forward and get into that double dog I call it the double dog fight he's just got an incredible game right there fully laid out system but Mike very aware of what's going on here trying to climb back up the body steps off to the other side he's gonna look to get that guillotine yeah he's looking to open this up and Nathan Good job with the immediate uh, technical stand-up of Michael John as well. He does not want to be playing guard against Nathan. I think I think that's pretty obvious. Well, you could just never give Nathan any of anything that you feel that he wants in a match. You could never ever give it to him. So you have to keep him on his back foot the whole time. Hard collar tie from Orchard goes to the snap down, turns and now Orchard's mounted. Man, what a reversal of fortune that was. Nathan pretending like he's going to crack him. Practicing for Throwing CJJ. that simulation, but Michael John not really faced. He, you know, he's not, he's not going to extend his arms up and do what Nathan wants him to do, which is put his hands to protect his face. Yeah. Of course, this being the qualifier, no strikes allowed today. Yeah, Nathan showing what he's... What, what he's about now. I think he's just, you know, it's a little intimidation tactic. Absolutely. Trying to gain that reaction. Michael John not falling for it. Didn't fall for it at all. You, really, uh, he displayed his um, experience right there. Yeah, his composure. Look at this, he turns back over to the mount. Nathan perhaps getting a little uh, perturbed at the lack of action from Michael John trying to escape in the bottom, chooses to roll to his guard, initially with the body triangle back to regular closed guard. Yeah, I think Nathan, Nathan got a little excited there, man. I think he's, I think he, he's he a got little, himself a little worked up, a little with, worked the, up. with those uh, hand slaps. strikes. Yeah. Yeah, but, oh, and here goes ooh, to the leg. Is, ooh, tight knee bar. Oh, wow. Great transition as Michael John went to open the guard. Nathan transitioned to the legs and caught that straight knee bar. Nathan Orchard making a statement that you got to take it from him. 
He has come to reclaim what he feels is his, and he has won the 10th Planet qualifier. He will be representing 10th Planet in the 155 pound division at Combat Jiu Jitsu Worlds. And BMAC, when he sat down with us in the last round, he told us that, in his opinion, he's the best, not at MMA, not at straight Jiu Jitsu, but at CJJ. And that's where he excels, and he sits down with us right now. Nathan, talk Good us boys, through that. I fucking did it. You sure did, man. You predicted that one. You called it, you know, and I was just telling BMAC, you were telling us in the last round after your win that, you know, it's not MMA, it's not jujitsu, it's CJJ, and you are a, where you excel, and you are the unspoken champion, and you want your spot. Shit, I've taken second place three times in CJJ. That's right. But the last couple performances I've had have been shitty, and there's nothing like a couple losses to motivate the shit out of you, you know? And uh, my real big thing here, well, first of all, 23 is my lucky number. Today's uh, oh, qualifier. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, it's 2-3. But uh, just been trying to fall in love with martial arts again. Beautiful. You know, fuck being a competitor. Sure, I compete. It's not what I am. I'm not even a martial artist. I just do martial arts. And uh, that's what I'm doing now. I'm having a fucking blast again, you know? Man, well, you look tremendous at it. I mean, I got to tell you, you came out here, you looked really impressive. And, uh, you know, at the end of that match, you said they got to take it from you, yeah. right? And, and you know, Listen, I felt I, that. I lost, I lost the position from my performance, uh, the varsity spot. Right. And so it's like, I'm not going to lose it. You got to take it from me. And that's what this, if I would have lost today, that would have been fair. And I would have said, okay, someone took it from me. Right. As opposed to just me losing it. It's a different thing to me, you know? Right. Referring to the fact that Keith Kikorian has the number one spot yeah. in CJJ. Yeah. And you initially and, used to have that spot, and you, yeah. that's why you were in the qualifier today and then, at all. And then what happened in, at 55 last time I did it, PJ beat me in the semis. He went to the final, finals against Rotolo, got tapped. Uh, Derek Rayfield. No, no, no. No, before. No, I'm oh, talking, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the yeah, actual CJ, tournament. Yeah, yes, that's yes, right. Yes, sorry. And then, um, but I don't know if PJ is like maybe too big for 155 now. So I think so. They ended up giving it to Keith. Okay. Totally cool. I'm happy to earn my spot. No one's given me shit in my whole life. I have had to work for everything I fucking have. And I will keep doing that. Well, tonight you showed that, you know, you're, you're not going to relent in, in taking what's yours, and you're ready to put in the work. It's clear today. Like you said, you had a couple performances in CJJ before that, you know, you felt like you weren't at your best, and, uh, you know, you weren't able to get that number one spot, but you came back and you proved that you, in fact, deserve to be there among the best guys in the world. There's and, no doubt. And I proved it right now. I always knew that. I had to remind everybody else. Absolutely. You know, and that's part, of, it, that's part of being a high-level elite competitor, guys, is, you know, you, you, you can't rest on your laurels. This is a guy who's been there uh, many times, guy who's had ups and downs, and, you Look, know, dude, you I showed up. I showed up to weigh-ins this morning half a pound over. Like, I cut, dude, guys, straight up two weeks ago, I was 185. I cut <laughs> wow. 25 pounds for this. Wow. Came in a half a pound over, and I started jogging. To and make they're, like, they're like, oh, give him the half pound. I said, fuck that. Champ weight. I Champion am cutting weight. my weight. Yeah. And I did, and I won. So there's no fucking asterisk. There's there. zero asterisk. There's zero doubt. And I mean, you know, when you end it with submissions, it, it ends emphatically, and uh, that's the way you want it to yeah, go. That's it. Man, congratulations. All, also, uh, all uh, regulation time, baby. Yeah, that was no the big overtime, thing, man. Yeah. No OTs. Yeah. And, you know, did you feel in that last match, did it? Did you feel that Mike might have been kind of pulling back and waiting for overtime, or that he's waiting for his moment? I don't really know. I mean, I figure he was really tired. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it would probably be a smart strategy. But like, I don't know. I was just like I said, I, I'm on right now. You know, I've been, I've been, I've been working my ass off. And uh, what do you attribute that to? Is that is that maybe your gym is growing more? You're getting a higher level guys as you're bringing up your students. No, no, or dude. What, I'm doing martial that? arts again, man. I'm kicking and punching the bag, dude. I'm I, I play with every weapon every day. I've seen I, you, man. I've seen you with the bull whip that's on your what Instagram. I do. I do I've it seen, all. Yeah, I do it all. I, I do shit you guys haven't even seen yet. Wait, I got a shepherd sling like David and Goliath. <laughs> oh, that I can fuck some shit up with. You know what <laughs> you guys I mean? Gotta like, check that out. So anyway. Dude, wow, what incredible performance. Thank you so much for sitting down with us. And, uh, man, guys. congrats again. Fuck we'll yeah. see you in Did it, baby. Oh! <laughs> Nathan Orchard, the legend. Thank you, sir. Great job. BMAC, what did you think of this tournament? I thought it, I thought it was going to be good coming in just because of the guys that we had in the bracket. I feel like there was definitely no disappointment. Nathan comes in, wins all his matches by submission and regulation. Right. You know, as it played out, 
I don't want to say he had an easy walk, but the chalk won the tournament, right? Yeah, they did. And you know, again, it's like it's like this when you don't have the full bracket, you got it. You got to seed people. Every bracket should be seeded, I would say. I and, think so. Uh, you know, I think they had the two top guys as the right seeds. You know, yeah. both have, have both have been in this tournament many times. Michael John again has finished second, unfortunately. Now I believe for the fourth time. Yeah, you know, you know coming in, I would have had me personally. I would have had Ben as the two seed and Mike as the three seed. Okay, but they met. And it shook and out where it shook out the way it, it shook, shook out, out the yeah. way it was supposed Michael to shake John, out. Michael so good John seating won. by Scott Ross and Brian yeah. Brown. They did a good job putting this thing together. Man, just an array of submission victories tonight. I mean, we saw some overtime, but really, what we I think the highlight for me was the fact that we saw submissions. We saw Gogo -Go Plata. We saw Twister. We saw a Hindulu team. Man, like how much? How how can you get that array of submissions in a show? But here at Tenth Planet Qualifiers. <laughs> that was a, yeah, that was a Tenth Planet showcase, right? Absolutely. Man, and he, uh, Amir in the special match with Dude. Matt, he came out and had that Go Go Plata sweep from the top of half guard. He had from, a, the, from half guard. I mean, he had that was insane. An insane dexterity for a big guy, and uh, you know those guys, men, Matt Paul. That guy's good. Good guy. <laughs> really, really solid competitor. Competes all over. Has done a bunch. Big, Amir along. Big time MMA. Looked awesome though. He looked like. Uh, you know, like I seen him in Quintet, you know, and that, and that was... Well, he looked like the guy that's won the ADCC qualifier. There you go. You that's know? exactly why. Like oh, that, he is an ADC vet. That's, yeah. that's right. I knew yeah, he, he won was. the qualifier. Okay, yeah. and, uh, and he won the qualifier with that exact move that he opened with right there, that sweep. That sweep. That go-go go plotter go -go from sweep. half guard. If you, if you don't understand how much flexibility and dexterity it requires to hit a go-go plotter from half guard, man... I can't do that. I, I feel oh, like I can yeah, put my neither. feet anywhere, and I can't do but that. But to see a 250-pound heavyweight it's insane. <laughs> throw it up like that, like it's no problem. Yeah, that was nuts. Dude, it's too crazy. I mean, we saw, guys, some legends again. J.M. Holland, Anthony Burchek, MMA vet. You know, we saw some up-and-comers. Kevin Ma had a great performance against Ben Eddy. Yeah, I Victor, really like that one. Victor did well tonight, I thought. Victor David Garcia, good. though, you got to – we really got to talk about yeah. the performance that he We had. have to put some respect on David Garcia's name. The fact that he came out and submitted two high-level black belts. Yeah, in regulation. In regulation, Anthony Burchek and, and J.M. Holland. I think, really, both of those would, would be upsets. I wasn't familiar with David Garcia. I would have to agree with that. Before this tournament, and, you know, I think he put a big stamp on his name, increased his street value, and I would like to see him competing again. It'd be really good. Oh, yeah. You want to come in? You want to come in? Eddie, sli come Eddie slide in. Uh, oh, come on, Eddie. Okay, we got you. We got you. Thank you, big dog. <laughs> All right, guys. We, well, I mean, we tried We tried to talk Eddie onto the mic. He's, he's got a podcast to run to. You guys, make sure to check out Eddie Bravo's podcast on Rockfin exclusively hilarious he's back on you guys wanted him on podcast he's got his own podcast go check it out on rockfin please support him with this one guys thank you guys for following us shout out to the grappling network for presenting this bringing us out today i'm mike wilson tempe black bell with my partner brandon mccatherine thank you guys so much for joining us we really appreciate it please stick around check out our sponsors and support us thank you very much for viewing Moving on to the next, cause the show don't stop, only someone cutting them checks out, let's go. And I know you hear me, can you see me, is this really true life, if you're a fan and you feel me, yeah. I'm saying this is the job, I've been doing this for a minute, we rise and we fall, we answer the bell.